since we have everybody here a who, momentous occasion yes who would like to recap what happened last time not Vigo I don't Vigo wasn't here was he Wait, no Vigo was stealthy yeah I have my water oh, I have no. my eggnog I'm good to go Spiker, sugars are spiking tonight. That's, that stew was good tonight, man. Whew. If you all haven't picked up that cookbook, they got good recipes in there. The cookbook. The D and D cookbook. Yeah. The official D and D cookbook. Every time I see it, I'm like, only, oh, I really want to get. Not it. only does it have recipes, I've never heard there, of it. it. Tells you, but it tells you <laughs> stories <laughs> for each for each dish. So there's human food, elf food. Uh, halfling food and dwarven food, and then they have like a, uh, like a uh, other races, like other races and drinks and stuff like that. Like they have some crazy recipes in there. Is, is there a proper size compendium that goes along with this? No, it, well, it just kind of like it'll tell you like this you is an outrage. To, I, turn... I formally protest. <laughs> you, well, you turn to the thing and it tells you the history of the of the certain food and where it came from. Yeah, but is there a proper size? compendium that goes along with this with for proper sized meals and drinks for proper right. sized people not all you just uh, bigs no well i mean uh, i mean the, the one thing they I've don't heard have that in proper there is any sized people food. can eat just as much as bigs they've got the same size stomachs yeah this is not true and i mean obviously the same way that bigs waste so much wood building <laughs> Big doors. You just need a proper well, size to, doorway. I, I mean, I think of all the deforestation that's going on because bigs, you know, you can, are, are what you are. It's you know, it's you can only waste speak. Point. You can only speak for gnomes though, because halflings definitely put down the food. They, 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 can, they can put down. They can put down a what Halflings I like to call proper size dish of food. Aren't proper size? <laughs> no, <laughs> halflings are not. They're they're. How are they're, they not? They are they are too big to be proper sized. They can't just be tall proper sized people. That's, no, that's because, big. That, because big. by by yeah. definition being tall, therefore they are big. They are they are they are they are small bigs, but they are still bigs. You know, not all of us can live off of of moonshine and 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 <laughs> and, and stardust and and flower dew. Okay. There, there is nothing. We need wrong actual with that. calories. There's collectible. <laughs> I can do that. Although yeah. Aldo doesn't need any of that anymore. Actually. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, we we don't need that. I mean, we're, we're fine. What what is Albert? Albert doesn't need anything. Who's Albert? Albert. Albert. Our he Warford concoction. Yeah. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh, yes. Correct. I should say they don't eat now. Ooh. Me and the one other one. <laughs> right. Literally only two that, Warforged in this world currently. Here. Well, okay, but we, we have to we see. Know of. <laughs> in a, we'll have to see in an actual conflict. Can Albert <laughs> actually hit something? Or do all Warforged suffer from the inability to kill living things? <laughs> um, complex. I have made so a perfectly <laughs> fine death dealing machine at this point. So well, that's, yeah, that's that, all I'm gonna say. So here's oh, the thing: say is that Alberto, although he's a war for he the same thing. still his soul is still vengeance paladin, which you all will see what's gonna happen. But, but I've been thinking the, about this for three weeks. So, but the other <laughs> Warforged also claim to be a death dealing machine, and yet it proved to be quite incapable of that. Poor Christian. Um, not I'm even here to. Sure, not even here to I'm pretty sure the staff. I'm pretty sure the staff of Lightning and Thunder is going to have something else to say about that. Oh, let us not please forget the plus one magic sword that was incorporated. <laughs> that and the also min, min, helps. minty breath. Yes, and the, yes, and you are quite breath. welcome for both those. Oh, I can't wait to use that for intimidation. It's going to be so much. <laughs> All right, so recap from last week when Vigo was not here or was stealthing around and not paying attention. I, I, I elect um, Melisande because she keeps the best notes of anybody here. No. Oh, Sorry, me. I motion has been made on the table. Is there a second to the motion? That I Melisande second that began? notion as a DM. Oh. Motion has been seconded. You're what? I'm eating. That is inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> Stop talking with your mouth full. How about Kimosabi, <laughs> aka Albero, recast for last week? 
Okay, so this is a couple of weeks ago, so let me try yes. let me try to get this right because I was sort of on I was sort of well, I was listening the entire time, so maybe I am the best one to do it. So so anyway, the lich that was encountered down in the dungeon uh was defeated. And when it was defeated, it dropped three artifacts. It dropped the hand, the eye, and the heart. Um, when it did, uh, there was discussion of what to do with the artifacts. Um, I believe Mood uh, had at one point... Was it Mood disappear? And I'm still trying to get to know you guys' characters. Because it's technically only my third session. But I believe Mood went to ask his aunt? Is that who it is, or grandmother? Yeah. Um, what what to do, um, with and and asking why, uh, if she could take one of the artifacts, uh, or or what to do with the artifacts, um, and during that time there was a discussion to split up the artifacts. Uh, by I believe Vigo said let's split the artifacts up into, uh, three different uh. Uh, uh, citadels, I guess, to keep yeah, them yes. to keep them each protected separately, so no one knows. Then there was also the plan to put them in three different planes of existence and and just hide them on three separate, totally separate planes. Um, and during that discussion, there was also loot that had been broken up um, with some fairly high. Uh, value items um, uh, that that were dispersed among the party, um, and in that time we didn't. I don't think we figured out what to do with the artifacts exactly. We had we, we still did. have them. We did. We did. Yep. Okay, that's the one uh, thing I the, forgot. So, Auntie took two of them, and we have one. And we have, and we have yep. what the heart, correct? Yep. Okay, yep. So, and we have the heart. Um, which was discussed maybe to put into Albero, but that was uh, that was not, <laughs> not a good idea. Yeah. Not agreed. <laughs> it was the best idea. <laughs> it was not a good idea. <laughs> so, so the heart the heart was not put into Albero, but uh, but uh, a concoction of different magical items, including his armor and his ashes. Oh oh, that's right. Um, which I can't remember which one of you um, went to go visit. Uh, who's the cleric? That'd be me, uh, Silas. Okay, so Silas, you went and and saw your god, correct? Oh, yeah. To ask for the soul, for Albero's oh, soul. Yeah. Correct. And yeah. got the soul ba and brought it back in a jar. And then the party put the ashes into, like, painted them on the inside of the armor, put in the staff, oh, put god. in the, 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 the uh, frost very potion, shocking. A magic sword uh, and a couple of different things and did a uh, resurrection spell which somehow worked and Albero came back to life as the second Warforged and now and then the last thing that happened is was the discussion of either to go towards the white dragon or the obsidian dragon and we all decide decided to go to the obsidian dragon and took a portal through the Shadow Realm by a new uh, ability to take Shadow Portal. I guess Shadow Realm portals. I can't, I can't remember what it's called. And now we are in Dunwaki Rise, I believe. Yes, as the you teleport from the Shadow Realm to Dunwaki Rise, and you look around, and it is just nothing but barren landscape. Magma flows everywhere as you hear a loud, booming voice, both in your head and permeating throughout the air. We have intruders in our realm, Master. As the ground beneath all of you begins to shake, I need everyone to make a... Uh, dexterity saving throw as beneath you a the land starts to move and shake and grow as a volcano begins to rise beneath your feet uh, everyone gets a plus three to that by the way because you're around me mm -hmm. uh, 
Was I still traveling with them? I mean, technically you're with them, yeah. Okay. Here's something that I do have to ask, and I was thinking about, and I didn't ask you through chat. I probably should have. But now that Albero's armor is part of his body, mm -hmm. does he, he doesn't have disadvantage on stealths anymore because he's not technically wearing heavy armor. It's his body. I mean, technically you are heavy armor. So does it? So so it's still disadvantage on. I would on say stealth? yes. Okay. You have a lot of benefits. We'll we'll leave at least one detriment in there. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Your, your, your stealth score sucks. So anybody uh, under a ten, ah shit, will receive thirty nine points of bludgeoning damage as the rocks from this volcano start to fall down from the sky. Um. As the sky begins to turn dark red and the ash begins to pretty much smoke at you guys out and um, makes it difficult to breathe. You see off in the distance a small figure getting larger and larger as something is approaching you. What do you do? Are we standing on solid ground at least? I mean, you're technically on the hill of a volcano as it's rising. Uh, how far away are things? Uh, you see it off in the distance, you're not quite sure. Like a mile, two miles, Probably 500 a, feet. I'd say a mile uh, or two out. Okay. Beagle looks for something to stealth and hide behind and will use his uh, flight capability with his wings uh, to not be standing on the ground. So avoiding any further... Uh, Shaking and risk of being knocked off his feet. How big's the volcano that's rising? Um, I would say normal volcano size, pretty big. So it's like a Vesuvius or Krakatoa. Mount Saint Helens. Yeah, the mountains growing underneath us. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Do you want to? Should we use the instant fortress? To wait for this guy to come to us? Could. <laughs> yeah. We have yet to use it. That's very what? true. <laughs> that is very true. <laughs> I mean, I mean, sure, there's not really going to be a better time for it, right? Yeah, I, we, we got a ton of time before that gets here. Well, it's yeah, not well, a one time use thing. We've had it for like twenty, like a year almost. It feels <laughs> like. Yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and pop up the instant fortress and try to find a suitable place to put it down on. Let's see here. I bring out Cora. You almost always have Cora out. She wasn't out this time. Okay. And Todd would probably um, take the the front of the group and make sure that he's the the first person that whoever this is approaching would see. Okay. I mean, technically, the tower has magic that prevents it from being tipped over. So yeah, easy enough to do. So yeah, so your 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 instant fortress is up. Um, are you staying outside then, Todd? I would, yes. Okay. Is there anybody else popping in? Uh, no. how, how large is the entrance fortress? Uh, Twenty it's feet by building. thirty feet tall. Yeah, it's a solid building. Grace will fly into the fortress and then keep watch through one of the windows. Okay. Yep. It's that fortress, except it doesn't have the, like the third paragraph. <laughs> um. 
Well, since that happened, I think I think Albero will also stay on the outside, and he is going to cast Death Ward on himself. Okay. There, I made it easier, Eric. I got, oh. I got rid of the third paragraph. <laughs> third paragraph's gone. Yes. <laughs> no more disintegration for Albero. He's done with that. No, it just takes two. Uh, Melisande will go in, but Cora will stay out. Okay. Yeah, I think Mood will go in, and... Well, Mood's going to cast Fly on Kojo, and then... Mood will go in, and then Kojo and Sabato will stay outside. Okay. Uh, Vigo will fly to the uh, the upper level, uh, and then enter in through uh, one of the arrow slits. Okay. Um, as you are watching this figure approach you, um, it as it gets closer, it splits, and there's actually three of them coming your way. Whoever's still outside, make a perception check for me. Hey! Cora doesn't have perception. Uh, yes, she does. You just click wisdom. Oh. Kojo sees all! Yeah, he does. All right. <laughs> uh, between Kojo and, mm -hmm. and um, Cora, you guys can tell that these three creatures that are approaching you are, are phoenixes of some sort. Um, they, uh, Kojo can tell almost certainly that they are Ash Phoenixes. Oh, okay. I, I can't, I can't make, I can't really make out what's, what's coming towards us. Anybody got a clue what those things are? Are they good and bad or hostile? Anyone? Who else is there? Well, Cora can't talk, can she? So she can't tell him. She can communicate Cora, with you. Oh, I guess I can say. Oh, well, of course yeah. speaks I guess Draconic. Of course speaks Draconic. <clears throat> they appear to be Ash Phoenixes. Well, Kojo's one who could tell what they were. Oh, I thought you said Cora could. Cora could see them. She I couldn't have... tell what they were. Oh. Kojo could actually see what they were. I have no idea what these are. <laughs> oh, no. It's it's oh, it's, no, a, it's, a, it's an ashy bird. <laughs> Probably elemental by the look of it. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> that's pretty cool looking. Oh, that's not a good thing. Where's our map? You guys are on the world map right now. You guys are not in combat. Um, from the top of the, uh... It, is it just Ash Phoenixes? Uh, so far, yes. Okay. Oh, good. Well, I don't like the line, but also drives it to seek vengeance against all living creatures. <laughs> Which tick? I will, yeah, I guess I am. Don't worry about that. <laughs> I'm gonna so... have Kojo move up, just so we can use the ability he's got that he has absolutely no control over, just so he doesn't hit his allies. <laughs> so maybe like two, three hundred feet-ish. Um, can we see from the, uh, like, are there towers on this on the fortress, right? One more time? I'm sorry. There Are there towers on the fortress? Like, can I be on the top yeah. of the roof? It's supposed to be. Yeah, yeah you can be, you can be on the roof of it, yeah. Yeah. Is there anybody else around besides these three things coming towards us that we can see? Make a perception check. All right. Give me a second. I rolled a two. <laughs> <laughs> Looking around, you only see the three um, creatures flying your way. Okay. No, I don't see anything. Um, 
Uh, is there any other thing that anybody can think of Arcana check for these things if we need more information? Oh, I don't know. V Vigo okay. peers outside, looks down at Mood and goes, it's one of your things. Hold on, I gotta interject real quick. I love it when Eric is stumped on something. Just saying. I mean, <laughs> is it an Arcana or a Nature check? <laughs> uh, I'd go Arcana. This would be more nature, and honestly. Grace, see them? Okay, they're, 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 they're the same number. They're the same number. <laughs> Eleven. Ah, <laughs> uh, you you don't know you you have actually not encountered these before. Uh, who has got no idea what these newfangled dust birds are? Can Frace see them through the arrow slit, or can someone point out where they are? Uh you can see like the shapes off in the distance, yeah. Okay, so then I could also because it's that tiny thing over there. Uh, make a perception check first with disadvantage since you're like looking through the arrow slits. With mood pointing it out, could I cancel the disadvantage? Sure, go ahead. Oh yeah, yeah. So with mood pointing them out, you're able to pick them out really easily. Go ahead and make a nature or conic, either. Or. The same. Yeah. You don't nope. know any better than Mood. That's not the one I want to roll high on. <laughs> uh, okay. Let me try. Oh, we already had okay, two. I'm looking out. We already uh, had two. Oh, you can only do two? All right. Never mind. Otherwise, everyone's rolled, and there's no point in that. You should let me do. You should let me do it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, these creatures are getting closer. What are you guys doing? Or are you just letting them come closer? Uh, like I said, uh, Coach had moved up about 300 feet. I think uh, Sabanto's going to back him. Mm -hmm. uh, so you see, engage. you guys see Kojo and Sabanto getting ready to engage in these creatures when they get closer. Okay, so I was going to fly up and Albert see if she gonna can be doing communicate the same thing. with them. And I make a line of defense. Uh, God will go up as well to... Uh, basically be side by side with Kodo. Kodo's like, uh, okay, but there, there's going to be tornadoes. <laughs> Un uncontrollable, a uncontrollable tornadoes. Not a problem. A lot of uncontrollable tornadoes. I'm going to speak out as the, as the voice, voice of reason here for a second. Uh, do we know these things are hostile, or are you going to just initiate an attack because you see a strange creature coming towards you? Well, we and heard why Cora is flying up to talk to them. Well, we heard intruders and something around the point of like attack, <laughs> and then these things showed up. Actually, then a mountain appeared, and then these things started coming directly hey. at us. Okay, from but, a really long distance away. Right. So my question becomes, and maybe this is a magic thing that I don't understand because I'm, you know, not that kind of guy. Um. Are we aware that the connection between the voice of Master There's Intruders, the volcano, and these three creatures, are they connected somehow? Do, does it sound like these three creatures are the ones that spoke in our heads? Or is there potentially something else we're not seeing that caused the volcano and is the, what gave out the warning of intruders? Does that make sense? So... Do, the, do we think these three things from so far away, we originally thought they were one creature. You think they have the mental capability or magic capability to project that thought that far? Or is there potentially something closer to us that projected the intruder's thought? And these three things just happen to be showing up at the same time. Possibility. Can I have, uh, for example, Kojo okay. move like... Let me like, give you an example of my terminology. Horizontally away from the group to see if they, any of them veer off towards him. Like, enough to show change in direction. To see if they're coming at, like, if they want to engage the closest one of us. Like, they're specifically coming towards us. Um, so Kojo changes his where he is, where they are. And yeah. you see the, the three uh, creatures veer the direction that Kojo moved. So they're definitely coming for us. <laughs> or 
or just coming definitely for going you. for Kojo is what <laughs> we know. Yeah, literally going for Kojo. I but would have continued also... straight. Uh, Kojo's going to start summoning tornadoes, I guess? Well, I, I guess how far away are they? Uh, at this point, we're going to say they're about maybe 2,000 feet. Okay, um, so when they're about 1,000 feet, I think he'll start trying to shoot tornadoes at the enemy. Even with Korra <laughs> going to try to engage them. Is Korra, like, going past the 300-foot mark? Yes. Okay. Then, uh, 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 unless Mel changes that, but... She said that Korra was going out to try to talk to them. Speak to them, yes. Yep. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, so they're... Are they all going after Kojo when he makes his distance? Yep. Or is part... Do they re-engage Korra when she gets past Kojo? Yes, I was just getting to that. As, as Korra okay. passes past Kojo... They change direction again towards Korra. Okay. Uh, so I guess so Kojo will get, like... Will pseudo keep pace, but keep going, like, diagonal? So that if, like, Korra dies, he'll be the next closest thing, but decently, like, out of the way? Like, he's getting closer, but diagonally. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay, so he'll do that. Todd will keep up with whoever is in the front. All right. That's Ko Does, uh, Korra. Is Todd flying? No. Okay, so you're on the ground while Kojo is in the air. Yes. Okay. But he's going after Korra. It, oh, oh, yeah, Korra. Okay. Albero is going to stay back with the people in the fortress to kind of be a line of defense there in case one of them will be resolved. All right, sounds good. Uh, so, Mel, what are you doing? What is Korra doing? Uh, Cora's gonna try and see if she can talk to them, um, to see, like, why they're coming towards us. Okay. What is Cora saying, exactly? And what language is Cora speaking? Uh... I think she can only speak Draconic. Yeah, she can only speak Draconic. Um, just like, oh, we mean no harm. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I was like, crap, now I'm going to have to roleplay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, How dare you put role playing in my role playing game? Huh? <laughs> yeah. Hi, what brings you this way? We were just <laughs> coming to visit your fine lava covered area. Okay. As Korra speaks to these creatures that are flying, they don't seem to understand or care what Korra is saying. Okay, uh, are they, do they look aggressive? Make a perception check with Korra. Uh, is that the wisdom again? Yep. What's Korra's wisdom, or uh, intellect, I mean? Less than the wisdom? No, like, what's what's her actual number? Eight. That's what this is, right? Yes. Roll a d20 for me. I mean... Okay. Yeah. Cora does not think they are hostile. Cora does not think they're hostile. Would, would you like oh, to close on... Like that okay, so I, she relays that to Sabanto that 
it doesn't seem that they understand what she's saying, but they don't. She doesn't think they seem How? hostile. How? How? Oh. Well, he, uh, how far away is he? So Bonto's like a thousand feet back, ish. Oh, okay. I Kojo's Kojo's like three hundred feet to your left, <laughs> but um, uh, I forgot his name. Uh, our fighter guy that Todd. ran up with you is clo- Todd. Todd is that, close. That should be an easy one for you to remember. <laughs> yeah, Todd is close. Can- Todd is, is Todd, can Todd move that fast? Yes. Uh, okay. He, yeah, he, he, I think he can keep up with. Uh, but does Todd Cora. speak Draconic? Because that's all she speaks. No. Okay. So. You're lucky Todd so... speaks common. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Some oh, days yeah. we wonder, oh, yeah, Casey. Which one um, how close <laughs> did uh, the, the dragon get? Like, how far away are the. Uh, they're the they're about is... 500 feet from Cora at this point. And, okay. And closing fast. Okay. Um... So if she doesn't think that they're a threat, then she's probably going to keep... Uh, what is it called? Hovering. She's going to hover there and keep probably trying to talk to them. Uh, I, when she stops moving... I will pull out a quarter staff and take a like a defensive stance. Okay. And just wait for them to approach. Is Kojo doing anything? Uh he's he's that uh he'll teleport ninety feet away from uh the Todd, to the left. Okay. Yeah, so as these three Ash Phoenixes approach Korra, let's get this... Do-do-do. Well, is he close enough now that Korra can tell him? Go tell go. who? Did Kodo you just does... have Sabanto catch up? Sabanto's way back. Or Sabanto's... Oh, who... Sabanto's like who halfway between the tower and uh, every... and this encounter. Who did you just have catch up with? Kojo. Me? Kojo. Kojo. Okay, Kojo. Uh, can can Cora tell Kojo? He... Kojo does not speak Draconic. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Neither does Sabanto nor Mood. <laughs> Kojo's way off to the left over there. Yeah, he's 90 feet. Yeah. 90 feet. All right. As these three... Ash Phoenixes get to Korra. They're going to rip into her. Ooh, well, that solves that issue. So, first Phoenix. 23 to 16? I don't know what her... Oh, right here. Okay. What's Cora's AC, Mel? Uh, 70. 18. What? Oh, 18, sorry. Okay, so the first one hits. Hit points are 7. Okay. Has to be over eighteen. Eighteen or higher if she's at eighteen AC. Okay. All right, so uh, seventeen points of slashing damage and seven points of fire damage, but I think Core's immune to fire or yeah. resistant. <clears throat> Let's see. If she's a fire dragon, it's immune. Damage immunity is determined by Drake's draconic essence. Yeah, so she's fire. So, so what essence do you think you have active? She's most often fire, so it would be it would be when she's gone. I would if I needed to bring her back as a different essence than I would. So, so seventy minus seventeen. Well, and the twenty three. No, that's the, the hit roll, not damage. Oh. Okay. All right. All right. right. The second one. This and then uh, another 11 points of damage. Okay. And then the third one. 
Oh, sorry, I clicked that one extra time. Uh, is 19 slashing because wait, one, two, one, and all right. So, yeah, so the last one is a 21 and a 20 to hit. So, those both hit. Yes. So, she'll take the 15 slashing plus 19 slashing. And I need Core to make a strength saving throw. Which one? This? That was. This is the third one? So, so the 21 and 20 are the third one. Oh. I actually oh, clicked okay. the third, an extra time for the. That bottom ash okay. challenge, ignore. So, okay. 15 slashing from the 21 to hit. And then 19 okay. slashing from the 20 to hit. And then Core needs to make a strength saving throw. Okay. It doesn't have a way to make it saving. Yeah, it's yeah, fine. Just the so she takes okay. eight points of necrotic damage from the beak of this third uh, Ash Phoenix. Yikes. And with that's exactly how many points she has left. Oh jeez. <laughs> and as so, Cora <laughs> desummons, everyone can realize, hey, these things aren't so good. I need everyone to just go ahead and please roll initiative. <laughs> At least Cora can come back. Yes. Please, I'm seven to my. Oh, I didn't click my guy. Oh, my guy's not even. Oh, off. my goodness. Hold on, my thing's being. I guess I'm on the way back here. Sorry, I didn't select my token. Uh, so 14. No. Jesus. What is 25? Vigo got a 25. Amazing, right? Now. Are our tokens all on? No, they're not. Okay. No, I, I only put. Uh, Todd and uh, Cora and Kojo on there. Oh, oh, well, and Silas. I didn't put Silas on there. Oh, I see oh, Silas right. took the initiative and put himself on there. Oh, wow. Well, you know, I, I don't I like to interfere and in, do that to a DM's <laughs> map, so I wait. <laughs> Which is why Vigo oh, did not have here. a token to click on. Silas had a 12. Oh. Uh, yeah, 12. Yeah. And Barrow had a 5. Technically, well, I guess five. Yeah, I rolled. You were on there already. I am. Uh, yeah, right here. Oh, never mind. That's your picture. <laughs> Probably better that he acts like. Oh, here we go. Here, that should put me on the tracker, but I can always add you onto the tracker, so never have to worry about that. No. Oh. Okay, did it work? Yep. You got a 25. Am I on the tracker? I got to throw Vigo on there. Oh, no. Dude. Save those for later. No, get them all out of the way now. No. Vigo, 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 Vigo. Vigo. Roll it really low, so I hope I smite the ever-living crap out of one of these things. Uh, so, uh, should I just move Cora's token back over to me because she's gone right now? And... Does she have to summon? Yes. Yes, you have you to have summon to her. By, no, I know, but does she has? Does she sum, Can she summon anywhere, or does she summon by me? It'll it's like thirty feet from you. Yeah, it says it's in like the thirty description. sixty feet from you, or something like that. It'll say in the description. Where'd your token go? I deleted it. She's dead. Yeah, but it'll be easier if it's there. Yeah, but you got like a thousand feet to make up. <laughs> you got like a thousand feet to make up to get. No, I know. I was just gonna drag the token over by me. And then I was gonna, you know, resummon her when I when it's my turn. But right, but you can also drag whatever. the token onto the map. I know when you but summon that's her. An extra step that I didn't have to do. It's one less thing I have to worry about when I'm running everything. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Mel, it is currently your turn. Oh, As you okay. see, Cora just disappear off in the distance, and your connection with her fades. You know that she needs to be resummoned. All right. Then I resummon her. Because um, I love you. <laughs> uh, what are the different essences? There's fire, ice. Is it just fire, acid. ice? Acid. Water. Or is that ice? Uh, fire, cold, lightning, acid, and poison. Acid. 
coal, fire, lightning, poison. Oh. And keeping fire's probably best, that way you'd be immune to the fire damage. Well, I'm going to bring her back as cold. Okay. Because I have a feeling we're going to be dealing with a lot of fire. So, okay. Real quick. She's immune to fire when she's in fire form. Right. Which, which means she'll take less damage. Yeah, so the question is, do you want her to take less damage from fire? Or do you want her cold attacks to do more damage? Well, if I'm tanking her, wouldn't I want her to be able to do more damage? If you're having her tank, Maybe. you want her to take more damage. In, in less. Yeah, the goal is oh, you want her to be a tanker, or do you want her to be your tank? And if we don't even know if cold then, yeah, does more I, damage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Well, we I just have a feeling. You don't know what there is. Okay, you're right. All right, I'll 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 bring her back as fire again. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, at this point, they're what, like, three hundred feet away from you guys? No, they're uh, a thousand. A thousand. Right, right, right. Yeah. So there's nothing really I can do. That's too far away for me to hit, right? Yeah, you got oh, a yes. six hundred foot range. I say you can just hold an action in case something gets in range of you. What does that mean if you hold the action and then something's in range? So of you? let's say you want to hold an attack action, um, and your trigger will be if an enemy comes within range. So if an enemy comes within six hundred feet of you, you'd be able to use your action to attack. You get to go whenever that action occurs. So yeah, okay. whatever that right action now, is triggered. You're the yes. first one to take an action. So if you yeah, say, say like one of these birds arrow shot, parts, right? Hang on, Eric. I'm talking. If you <laughs> say you're going to hold your attack action, your bow shot, until the creature comes within range, then it's Vigo's turn, and then it's Sabanto's turn, and then one of the creatures gets to go, and at that point it flies within 600 feet of range. You get to break into the action, take your arrow shot at that point, because you've been waiting okay. for it to happen. Okay. Now, if nothing comes within 600 feet this turn, you just never shoot the shot. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. And we go back to the top of the round, and you can say, okay, there's still nothing within arrow shot range. There's nothing else I want to do, so I will, again, hold my arrow shot until something comes within range. Make sense? Yes. Okay. There you go. Spellcasters. Thank you, Eric. I appreciate the patience. Okay. Sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, spellcasters holding a spell will lose that spell if it's not a cantrip. If that trigger does not happen. Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. I mean, technically, they'll lose the cantrip, but it's a cantrip, so you just do it again. Right. You you wouldn't lose a spell slot in that yeah, case, yeah. but I, I was more referring to the spell slot. Yeah. So. That's all right. That so you're holding your attack action. Well, I have hail of thorns. Nope. And it says it takes no. It, it'd be on. It honestly, well, you can concentrate for a minute, right? Right. So you could do it, but if nothing comes within range in ten rounds, you'll lose your concentration on it. So just hold off it, on that. In ten rounds, is that? It's ten turns. People, every that's the people like all the turns Correct. before my next turn. It's oh, it's you go ten, ten times. Ten rounds all the way around. Yep. That's that's, okay. that's each of us having ten turns before it fails. So it wouldn't be good for me to prep that. Well, that's a bonus action a to bonus begin action. with, and you already used you your bonus action. Do it whenever. Oh, okay, okay, all right. Then I will hold my deck. Perfect. Vigo. Thanks for helping me learn, guys. We got you. Don't worry. <laughs> hey, I mean, it's not like we've been playing for a year. So. <laughs> Uh, who no, you're, you're more than welcome. Still at the tower, at the fortress, would best benefit from haste. Uh, so uh, 
Vigo, realizing the range distance and recognizing that he can't throw a dagger that far, uh, will use his fast hands to check and make sure he knows where all his healing potions are because it seems like these things are fairly aggressive and violent. So he may need to go around and administer healing potions to people during this combat. So he's going to prepare to play medic. Uh, that is my action. Okay. Kojo's turn. So Mood's turn. Uh, let's put... Uh, I think he's got to move up like a little bit. Uh, let, let's put a tornado on each one of them. All righty. And then I gotta make strike saving throws. All right, we'll go from bottom left, then top, middle, then top right. They do not have advantage, so they all fail. Yeah. Okay. Uh so. So twenty damage. So they're thrown sixty feet in random direction and take twenty points of damage. And okay. all right, uh, yep. roll yeah. a d8 for me, Eric, three times. Yeah, here we go. Two, so 60 feet, you said? Yeah, <laughs> randomly directed. Poof. 60, so this is the first one. Uh, this one is 60 feet up that way, and this one is 60 feet over this way as well. Yep. And then at the beginning of my next turn, they're going to, the tornadoes, so we need the spot where the tornadoes are, all going to move in 30 feet in a random direction, uncontrolled by Kojo. For one minute, they're going to just how big, around. How big are the tornadoes? 10 feet. They're little 10 foot squares. Oh, boy. And they're well, going to rip over there, so... face. <laughs> they're going to rip up the trees. It's going to be awful. What trees? <laughs> it's all lava. Oh, lava, lava and rocks. Yeah, it's going to be gonna, machine gun gonna everywhere. Lo- they're fire natos now. Uh, anything uh, else, Mood? Yeah, so Bondo's going to teleport uh, next to Kojo. Okay. You ever seen that? You ever seen that video with all the fans around the bonfire and then it turns into a fire NATO? That's what's going on right now. <laughs> yeah, all right, that's going to bring us to Todd. Oh, didn't mean to skip over you. Well, very disappointed that uh, everything just disappeared from. Well, wasn't everything in the air? Anyway? Yes, yes, right it was. Yeah, so so those trails might come down too, so I I get away from that spot. <laughs> um. We'll go ahead and. Action will take the dodge action, just because there's nothing in range of me. Okay. Do you want to move and away from the tornadoes? I will start moving to the the right. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. Already? Anything else? Um. Yeah, I'll... Bonus action rage. Nice. All right. Uh, Frisk. Uh, so I'll just ask, does anyone that's here at the tower want haste to catch up to the battle? I mean, even with haste, they were two, th- or they were a thousand feet away. So even with haste, right. that would still take probably longer oh. than haste lasts. I would love haste, but if they are 200 feet in the air, it's not going to do as much. So. That's also true. It, it's a great thought. Hold on to it. It right. will come in handy soon. I'm hoping. And we'll see. Wait and watch. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. We got two. We got two people that rushed ahead. Silas. So they they are the front. Do I well, have to use an action to have Cora head back that way? 
Do I have to wait for my turn again? We can say Cora started moving 30 feet that way. Or 6 okay. feet, whatever her movement is. But uh, yeah, your action okay. does not make is not what allows her to move. It'll take about 30 no. rounds. Okay, yeah, she's got 60 there? feet. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna quickly go out the, the tower. I'll just be using that for my turn. Be like, we had a tower, we had defense, but we had to just go in this muttering my entire time. <laughs> well, most of the people out there are dispendable, expendable. Everyone but Todd is expendable. If they die, they come back. <laughs> and I thought to myself, hey, if I put Death Ward on Todd, everything's going to be groovy. Didn't do that. <laughs> That's my turn. This is why we can't have nice campaigns. <laughs> I love it, though. All right. Well, all through the Ash Phoenixes, the closest thing is Todd. Oh, Todd. So they're they're coming down into range of you being able to hit them. And How fast do they look like they're moving? They're, uh, they're, way, they're way far away. Roughly about 90 feet. They're, they're, they're still like... They're still a thousand feet off, right? right yes. I am back. Yeah. Oh, so. Todd, they're all coming down to your level to, to take a bite out of you. Uh, just how I like it. All right. So we're going to go top, middle, bottom. Top one, uh, 15 and 20. 20 hits. All right. 12 points of slashing damage and eight points of fire damage. Six and four. Oh, you have fire? Nice. Yeah. Uh, bear totem. Ooh, even better. All right. The middle one. Natural 20 and an 11. So, obviously the 20 hits. Yeah. Um, so that's going to be, what, 30? I can't, I can't math today. 33, uh, 33. and oh, 15. No Have to 16. So, 16 and... 7. 7? Yep. And then the last Phoenix... Um, also, I forgot dodge action, so they have disadvantage. Oh, okay. So, so 17? 17 will hit. Okay. That just hits. All right, so that one still hits, and the other one, you would, you would only take, so you would take eight from the slashing and two from the fire. All right, uh, and then the third one. I need you to make a dexterity saving throw. Oh yeah, you're you're fine. Okay, so so you'll take uh, sixteen points in necrotic damage. Is that gonna have to? Uh, it says half everything except for psychic. So right. yes. So take eight points in necrotic damage, and you are not blinded as this. Phoenix beats its wings to try and blow up an ash storm in your face. All right. That will bring us to Albero. Uh, they're so far away. <laughs> um, okay, I'll hold him Al off by the time you guys get here. Albero is going to... I guess the only thing he really can't... Well, that doesn't even matter. <laughs> they're so far away, it would take me... Shit, 10, take me like 14 turns to get to them. <laughs> and then they might fly right over top of me. Um, I guess Albero is going to step up 30 feet, <laughs> which means nothing in this in the grand scheme of things. And he is going to ready a uh, compel duel uh, if one of them flies within 30 feet of him. Remember, you'll lose it if you right. don't use it. Well, uh, yeah. so question: Would would it be better for you to move and then I use your the action bonus. to dash? Well, no, it because would, if it I, even if I dash, it's a thousand rounds. Feet. Yeah. I mean, it would take me fifteen rounds to get over to him. <laughs> so it's that's not going to happen. Uh, no, I'll. Um, no, that's they still might not make it over by then. This is an endurance fight. I can last. Yeah. Um might be good to get back if you can. 
I understand. Hold on. Nope. I, I mean, like like Vigo said, there might be something closer <laughs> that might attack, that might flank. Yeah, that's a possibility. Uh. Yeah, I mean, uh, Al Barrow's just gonna sit tight. Okay. He's just gonna sit tight, and, uh, ready in action if something comes down. Adam. Sounds good. Striking range. Perfect. Mel. Um. I guess I'll just hold my action again and mm -hmm. and, and have... Cora moves. Or I can move like 80 feet. She's so each time. So she's moved another 80 feet. Yep. So 10 more rounds to go. Yep. <laughs> well, How did she the get there so you... quickly the first time? That because was... we're in combat. You're in combat yeah, now. Yeah. Combat. Yeah. <laughs> You're in I combat know. now. We were moving towards if... them. They were moving towards us. It was just mm -hmm. meeting in the middle. <laughs> Now, if the other two that are way out in front come back towards the tower, then we can meet in the middle. Mm -hmm. One does not or simply retreat. Them. Or they could fly right over us and go towards the tower itself. Well, they they, power. they yeah. do seem to be pretty focused on Todd right now. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. Next up will be Vigo. Um, well, being as uh, I cannot get out to where the only combat's going on, um, Vigo will move to the roof of the uh, fortress, uh, going up you the ladder fly. through the trapdoor. I can, but I'll go and, <laughs> and fly up to the top. I'm not flying out to go fight these things. Um, <laughs> I am more of a stabby, stabby type. Uh, this is not a stabby, stabby situation. Uh, I would like to begin looking around and observing to see if there is, again another uh, hostile force, the one that might have said something about the master we have intruders. Because I'm not convinced these creatures did that. I'm convinced that there's something else going on because we came looking for a dragon. And I don't know a whole lot about obsidian dragons, but I don't know if volcanoes are suitable for dragons to live in. That's more of a melisande that I never got to ask the question. So I want to look not at the combat, but I want to look around to see is there anything else coming at us. All right, make a perception check for me. Thank you. I want to explain what I was doing so the folks at home can follow the incredible logic of this mastermind. Always think uh, about that audience. I am. You have to. That's why we're here. Is it? Are you not entertained? Twenty-four. Uh, <laughs> looking Eagle up, eyes. Looking out. Looking around, you don't see anything besides these three phoenixes in this area. Um, but includes taking in like the volcano itself. I mean, there's nope. nothing you... coming down at us from the volcano because nope. I really hate to get stuck in lava if it comes around. Nope. I've seen what mood can do with lava. <laughs> yeah, no, look, looking, paying especially close attention to the volcano, you don't see anything that gives you pause for concern besides these three phoenixes. Is the volcano still growing? Yes. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll, I will continue this action. That's my intention. Thank you for that. That's my that's my goal. All right. Anything else? No. Like I said, I've, I've I've checked my pockets with my fast hands. I know where all my potions are. I've confirmed that everything that is mine is in the proper um, Crown Royal bag of holding, and I am ready to administer aid as a good um, assistant healer, non cleric type. Yeah. Should I need to? Okay. But uh, yeah, I'm thinking lookout is more important right now because I'm still not convinced these creatures had anything to do with that master we have intruders call. Sounds good. Uh, Mood and company. Okay, um, I think. All right, so they moved how far from their original spot? About 40 That's feet not away really from their original spot. That's not really telling or else we'd be. Oh, well, I guess the tornadoes have to move 30 feet first. 
They're all moving in the eight direction. How how far do they move? Thirty feet. Nice. Thirty feet. Uh, now roll a d3 for me. Actually, roll three of them. D3? Yep. So just hit, actually just roll 1d3. We're technically not on the map right now, right? Correct. Two more, Eric. So this one went down. You can just hit arrow up and it'll do whatever the last command you did was. So they all went all down. Three. They all went down as well. Close oh to boy. the ground. Alrighty. Uh, so uh, now your actual turn. Yeah, so that's what the tornadoes do. Uh, I guess uh, Sabato's going to hit him with the, the thing that he normally hits him because he's got a 120 foot range. He doesn't need to move. Need to move. So the two that are in a line. These two here? Yeah. All right. What's the mood's wrath again? <laughs> ah! It's a deck save. One. It's a uh, wall. It's the wall of oh, thorns. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, they both yeah. fail. All right, so they take the damage, and they're in a wall of thorns now, and the speed's at, like, what's their speed? <laughs> Uh, yeah, one foot. Yeah, their their speed is quartered. <laughs> uh, and then uh, Kojo's gonna move up his. He'll move up his forty feet, puts a right in range, and he's gonna smack him. He'll smack the one that wasn't in the wall. Okay. Uh, the 24 hits, and does the 18. Okay, and there's damage. Very nice. Uh, anything else? I will teleport that one into the wall, so he's also got to make that save. <laughs> there we go. Alright, so it takes half. Takes half damage, right? That was, where'd it go? 40, so 20. That one's looking pretty rough. Good. Uh, I'm done. And the moods are just kind of like just sitting there looking at one of the little arrow slits. It's like carnage. Hmm. That's it. Alrighty. Uh, that's going to bring us to Todd. All, All right. Well, well, except for the top one now. All The other two are in range and they are in this uh, thorny wall. Um, this right. Um, first I will bonus action use a key point for patient defense again. Mm hmm. Which will allow me to roll a hit die to heal myself from Dwarven Fortitude. Noise. So. This is where it gets weird. I will do the bar one of the Barbarian ones, which is a d12. So I get eight health back. And then I will make one attack on this one and another attack on this one with the quarter staff. Okay. So no hits. One and a natural twenty. Nice roll damage. It was the middle one and the bottom one, right? In that order? Yes. Well you fixed. So first one's eight damage. Second one is seventeen damage. And you're high enough monk where your shit is uh magical. Uh 
Uh, my unarmed attacks would be... Um, did I grab a magic quarterstaff? I don't think I did. So I guess that isn't. Oh, okay. Um, doesn't look like they took as much as you were hoping then, in that case. That's fine. Um, but that amount. will be it for me. All right, that's going to bring us to Frisk. Still can't do anything, so waiting. Okay. I uh, just sitting here smiling. Yeah. Oh, um, both of those get two extra damage for rage. I forgot about that. Alrighty. That'll bring us to Silasun. Just gonna move forward. <laughs> gonna gonna <laughs> run past everybody else. Yep, running past everybody else in a panic. That's, about, right. that's gonna be it. All right. Do the phoenixes take damage starting in the thing? If they move in it, or if they end their turn in it, they'll do it. So they would have to move out of it. So the one. And they have quarter right movement. Right in front of him. The one right they have quarter movement. The one right in front of him would have to back up and then go up and over a twenty foot wall to be able to not take damage from the wall. The other ones could just move like to the other side of right. the monk. To get out of the wall and not take oh, damage let's at the end of the turn. Let's see here. Well, these two are smart enough. So five. 10 movement gets him out of there. Uh, you do get an opportunity to attack. Yeah, you get an opportunity to attack against this one, Todd. All right. Um, we'll just go ahead and unarmed attack that one because it didn't do as much. 24. That so that's uh, seven Very points nice. of damage. Uh, this one is, is magical. too dumb. So he's going to move closer to be able to hit you. How much damage does he take? Uh, so he's got to make another deck save. I think he's got to make another deck save. Fails. Yeah, he's got to make another deck save. Fails. 29 points. You see it explode into ash and scatter to the wind. How's that? It's gone. Alrighty. All right, this was going to make two attacks on you. At disadvantage. Yep. Uh, so 10 and a 15. No. All righty. Oh, and it's got to do this. It did not get its uh, attack back. <laughs> so... Uh, yeah, so this one will fly up a little bit as well, just start working its way over the wall. Uh, that'll bring us to Albero. He's just going to be ready. That's okay. All. Mel? Um. I am going to head up to Vigo and also run a uh, do a perception check to see if anything's happening or did he do a high enough check that we know for sure nothing else is happening he he's told you guys that nothing else was coming that he saw so you can do whatever you want to do you can keep looking keep look out okay so go ahead and make a roll for me, please. Perception. Uh, can Vigo assist her with that? I mean... So she has advantage on the roll? Your next turn, yes. Because you already made your okay. active perception check on your turn. 
Okay. So, since they're right next to each other, can we just do that now? Yeah, just sure. Why not? Next, and, right? I'll, and I'll give. <laughs> and I'll give. I'll give up my turn. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Coming so up. make another roll, Mel. <laughs> Thank you for pointing another that out, roll? Eric. Yep. Because Vigo's helping you out because that's what he's gonna do on his turn. And you guys are roughly same initiative, so you're given advantage that you have. Yep. Yep. Again. Okay. All right. Yeah. So it's my. Yeah. Um. So looking around, you don't. You still don't see anything out of the ordinary that looks like it could be a danger. Okay. Does your does your draconic sense kicking off anything? Is that something you do? Don't you sense dragons near you? Isn't that something I recall as a Drake Warden you can do, Mel? It depends on what if what she decided to take for her level two feature, I think. It's either level one or level two feature. Where would I find that on my It's favored enemy, I think. Yep. It depends on which one. Did you take the oh, cautious yeah, one, which okay. is more applicable to a generic thing, which is like damage, or did I have you to take look my whole list one in the find player's them handbook? Because... Did you take the ba base player's handbook one, which would no, have this don't. base you're, niche one? With your a... favorite enemy is a goblinoid. I have several. Yeah, you'll probably have two. But if you have goblinoid, you probably take pick two goblinoid, undead, and fiends. Okay, so you can't sense dragons. Okay, you can sense any of those, though. <laughs> okay. You, do you know I where I saw? I do you know them. where I found those? Where is it? On no. the bottom right of your character sheet on the main page. So that long list of everything. Favorite enemy fiends. Fiends. Okay, and then Favorite undead. Enemy. Okay. And you can click the where it says "filtered by" above your first favorite enemy. You can click that and choose like a racial thing, or a class thing, and that'll little down your list a little bit. Oh, okay. But don't click the gear. Wasn't there, a, wasn't there a level ability? I'm just metagaming a bit. Wasn't there a level ability thing she got at one point to let her detect dragons? No, it lets her detect her favored enemy. She yeah, can okay. spend some spell slot and then within like a... Okay. I thought it just gave me an radius. option to add another one last time we leveled up, so I thought I had like four, but uh, yeah. I'm it looks I, like I you chose the fiends. fiends. So. Yeah, I think that's the fiends one. Okay. Okay. Yep, okay. All right, Mel. Uh, v goes uh, her. Uh, anything else? Yeah. No. So I'll hold my action, and Cora will move another eighty feet. Sounds good. Me or and no? I don't Kojo. think she's on the map yet, right? She's nine more turns. Yep. Woo! Nine more. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Mood. <clears throat> okay. All right. We'll move the the the, the wall. Will vanish and then reappear. Uh, how high did this? bird in the back get when he was flying up? Uh, he was able to move up probably about 15 feet. Okay, so we'll hit both of them with the wall. Same thing, so another deck save. Mm -hmm. Alright, left one. Right one. He's still alive. 30. This one's still alive, too. It's holding on. All right, then we'll bonk, bonk. Uh, the wall will be, like, diagonal. Bonk, bonk. So I'm assuming the 12 misses. Yes. Okay. I'll just redraw the wall. Uh, so 24 will hit the... He's gonna, he would start with the closest one, but it's only one hit. Uh, <laughs> he'll hit the closest one first. All right. So are there just hedges falling from the sky? They're growing from the ground. That is enough yep. to drop the one. Because his okay. attacks are uh, magical, right? Yes. Okay, yep. Hedges falling from the sky, and it looks like a Bulbasaur doing vine whip. <laughs> just whoosh, 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 whoosh. <laughs> I love Bulbasaur. And then in which direction do the tornadoes go? Yes, well, uh, it, it kind of doesn't matter, because no matter where they go, they can't hit anybody. I know. <laughs> but where do the tornadoes go? Doosh, doosh, doosh. <laughs> All right, so. There is some poor farmer's kid out <laughs> hunting rabbits um, in the middle Vigo, of the volcano okay. place. Vigo, you would realize that there's a distinct lack of people in this area. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Just saying, I mean, you know, but 
if, if there's a, a fox or something out hunting rabbits looking around going, oh, crap, no. So this one goes 30 feet this way. It's almost back to exactly where it started. Yep. Uh, this one goes 30 feet. Nope, that's the wrong thing. It goes 30 feet this way. This one goes 30 feet. Nope, that's the wrong thing. This way. And now 3D3s. <laughs> So this one goes down again. So this one's like on the ground, just so is the third one over here. This one just moves straight to the right. It stays in the same level. Tornadoes. <laughs> oh, you vey. Yeah, I'm done. All righty. That's going to bring us to Todd. Only one of these creatures is left. Okay. Um, well, I will go the side of the, um, the hedge and, uh, make three attacks, uh, three unarmed attacks, putting away the quarterstaff. Yeah, go for it. Can you push them at all? <laughs> Hits. Uh, I can um, potentially stun unless them you, Unless you do less than three damage. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. I, I, he had three health. <laughs> yeah, so you hit him. He dis it dissipates into nothing but ash in the air. And you guys wait for a second. Listen out. Look out. You don't see anything. Uh, for all intents and purposes, you're out of combat. So Bonto will go over to Todd and be like, you want to go back to the base? Um, after, as he's walking over, I will... Um, he kind of appears next to you, just... As, as he is <laughs> walking over, I will kind of take a, uh, a sort of martial arts stance and spend whatever my next action would have been to do another dodge action to use a hit dice. Okay. There you go. So I will gain nine health. Um, and I will deny the teleport back and just start <laughs> going back. Okay. Uh... Sabanto and Kojo will get back in six seconds. Yep. Todd is taking his sweet time getting back to the rest of you. All right. Getting a good workout. Yeah. 80 feet yeah. of movement. Get Sabanto so or Kojo. 12 like, rounds ish. <laughs> to us. He, he didn't want to teleport. He wanted to walk. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> okay. I, that, that's, I what, that's what he just did. He was just like, he was offering the teleport. <laughs> it's he said it's no. more so I don't want the help from Mood. Mm. Okay. Just not into Mood? Yeah, not in the Mood. <laughs> <laughs> well, you should have a glass of wine to celebrate this. <laughs> That'll put you in the mood. Already there. That's very true. Uh, so I had originally planned to like, kind of like, like you're gonna get oh, near them, and then Kojo was gonna like keep pace with them while they were coming, and just leave tornado bombs behind, hopefully, like a thingy, so they they'd be weak, and then we could have all fought them. But that didn't go. So I, 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 have a, <laughs> I have a question. As you're standing here on this beautiful day, the tornadoes are three tornadoes. <laughs> tornadoes are still going. <laughs> Yeah, so for about a minute. About a minute. About a minute. Um, I don't know. In I mean, Vigo, you know, I, I don't know anything about these phoenix birds, but they disappeared. They didn't leave a corpse behind. So, are they normal creatures? They looked elemental. Is it safe to say they were elemental? Ish. Um, that's what a normal phoenix is. So, is it a decent assumption to say they're elemental? 
Todd, you were <laughs> right up front. Yeah, it's, I mean, you can you can say that, sure. Uh, yeah, Todd, you were, like, you got to encounter these things for right on. Make me an intelligence check. What was that? Uh, intelligence check from you, please. Oh yeah, that would be fun. Yeah. Um. Yeah, they're elemental, totally. From the looks of them, I mean, I've fought a couple elementals, mainly fire ones, and they just disappeared. So that they appear to be elementals to me. Okay. Um, is this what a normal phoenix looks like? I've I've heard stories. You know, they always tell the tale of the bird of fire, but that was more smoke and. I'm just curious, did the bards get it wrong? It was probably a different creature. Because the normal phoenix is just fire and red. Right, okay. Much and, bigger um, than that. Oh, as an aside, I am trying like hell not to metagame this, but I'm going to dig a little bit. Um, so, remind me what the bards always say about phoenixes. They go poof, and then they can come back. But it usually takes them time to come back. I Similar see. to what I do. But so they're not here, so that's the best we can hope for. I right. can go ward the area to make it so that they can't teleport back in, but I don't know where they teleport back in. Okay, so I guess that's the point. So theoretically, these things are going to come back after a time period, and we don't know if that's tomorrow or a month. In which way is the wind blowing? Which way do you want the wind to blow? I'm just curious which way the wind is blowing. <laughs> no, 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 so, but, I mean, looking around, and I guess I'll look at Mel and go, call me if I'm wrong, but are you hearing birds? Melisande? Sorry, baby distracted me. That's okay. When, when you and I were on top of the, the tower, looking around, did you hear any other creatures in the forest? I mean, there, there, you know, there are no trees. Were... Ignore the background. Maybe there'd be bird noises or something? Or wouldn't you think that, you know, the big ruckus noise might have scared some creatures till they would have flown away or something? I mean, well, isn't this a hellish, like, Mordor landscape? Right. There isn't any forest. Uh, you you tell me. I mean, you know. So correct me if I'm wrong, but the map I'm looking at says there's a bunch of trees <laughs> around us. <laughs> I see red squiggles now. <laughs> I, I will point and say. I mean, wind's blowing that way. So since they turned into ash, I'm going to assume that that's the direction that they're going to resummon. Is that the lava? Liquid hot magma. <laughs> All right, so there, so I, there's no creatures around here. You said devoid no, of life I don't earlier, believe so. so I'm, I'm trying to figure out. So this is not a this is a magma field. That's what it appears. Okay. Right. Although, is there still a volcano coming up underneath yes. our? Yeah, we're growing on a mountain right now. Yes. Like how high are we going up? right now? It hasn't stopped yet. <laughs> it is. Intense, but it's not enough where you guys are taking damage yet. Okay, so okay. I guess the all right. So there's no creature, but um, okay. So these three, these three birds, we just got rid of. And by the way, kudos for those who did battle them. Um, we you suspect that they will return or come back again somehow um, at after a time period of unknown length. So it's kind of like the random guard patrol that you can't really plan for. Um, I mean, everything comes back after an unknown, unknown length of time when you've lived long enough and given yeah. enough time. Okay. So, but these right. might be a little faster than that. Yes. Okay. So let's, I'll go back to another question I had originally, which was, do we think that those creatures are the ones who sent out the message master we have intruders i think 
it was the person who was being alerted sent those things out for us. They did not have any sort of sound, whether they were they were uh, when the the dragon was conversing, there was no sound coming from them. When they got hit, there was no sound coming from them. When they died, there was no sound. So I'm going to guess no. No, meaning no, they were not sent by whoever spoke. Or I'm going to guess no. Okay, again, please define the no. You don't think no, you don't think what? Define, I mean, no means no. Can... So, so, okay, I'm, I'm, and I'm not trying to be obtuse here, I'm trying to make sure I understand this. So, no meaning... I mean, so, you asked me to define no, no means no. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry, how the context in which you were using it, the question is... Right. Do you think those three creatures were sent by whatever spoke the master there's an intruder? That's a yes-no question. Yes. Yes, you think those three creatures were no, sent by the... Sent I think they were sent. I am going to say no, they were not the ones that sent out the message. Okay, good. All right, so we were in that. So I... I agree. Okay, all right. So So they were sent by whoever said the message about intruders. Now, how do we determine where that speaker came was from? Can I help our wizard buddy, like Arcana, think about how we got detected entering the in, in a random location uh, on this large scape? Mm. Who's the wizard buddy? You, you, you don't even need to do that. Okay. Mood with your plane. Sh oh wait, this isn't technically plane shifting, right? Would you still have gone no, within we, we, one mile of the city? Shift. Yeah. Yeah, we, we plane yeah. shifted within so a mile. So you city. are within one mile of the capital city of this region. Right. Chances are very good the dragon detected your presence. Right. I'm, I'm saying how. Uh because this is his territory and you're in his region. So like a lair thingy. Yes. Okay. NPC magic. Well, the, the, the certain Not layers right. have a... They no, detect fine. everything that is a layer. Okay. All right, so we're within a mile of the city, so we think if we go into the main... We go close... Approach the capital, that we will now encounter the dragon there. I, I don't think there is a capital anymore. Well, we can see that we're, we're a mile from the city out of its bird. Let's go. Is it? It's over there. Is it still a city? Yeah. Uh, no. Can we see the city? city? Like we're on a a volcano that's rising. Can we see that far? I mean, technically. So, what is what was the city? Uh, is it there is... anything to see anymore? Uh, th there's this massive volcano where the city used to be. Okay, so we're on one volcano, and we're looking at another volcano where the city used to be. Correct. Okay. So we're now twin volcanoes. Yeah, I mean, there's volcanoes all over the landscape here. <laughs> Question for the party. Do we think it's worth my one six-level spell for me to cast True Seeing? Um, see no. what's actually going on here? I, I would vote no. I would vote no, because Sabanto has true sake. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's the only reason why. <laughs> right, that's true. It's a, it's a good idea. So, yes. turning and looking at Mood and goes, okay, what do your minions see? Uh, do they see anything unusual? No. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Um, not quite as creepy as having Minnie around, but it, it still works the same. So we're good. Okay. Minnie's All still right. here. <laughs> Vigo had not share a while. Vigo's happy. Um, Minnie's just invisibly floating around uh, Silas's head. <laughs> Always. Vigo had not seen her a while. Vigo's happy. <laughs> All, right. All right. So we think we have to get to the what used to be the capital city, now the bigger volcano, and potentially find the obsidian dragon there. Is that the plan? Yes. <laughs> but our intel is... Our intel's very off. 
Uh, Silas, so, what, what do you want to want to pitch in on this and and uh, give us your uh, silver piece worth input? I mean, my my input is this is a recent development, and he's. I think this is retro like retaliation for all the other dragon riders being killed or uh, whisked off, and they are just throwing a hissy fit. An interesting observation. Okay, so does it look that? Recent? Hang on. How how do we deal with what's your recommendation for dealing with this hissy fit? Um, maybe we can. I mean, we just have to go find him and figure out where where he's waiting for us to monologue at this point. Okay. Um. Uh, nature check mood. No, this this change is not recent. This land has been like this for a little while now. Yeah, but the volcano that just rose up around or yes, in vicinity that, of, that is new. Do. Okay, so well, I think that Silas is that what you meant by the hissy fit? Either that or he detected us and started doing this as we were coming in. So, well, we heard uh, the we heard the voice say right, but we heard the voice say intruders. So I kind of think the I, jigs up. They kind of know where we are. We've blown the element of surprise. Yeah. Todd okay. will yell into the air because obviously he heard a voice and he will <laughs> say, uh, is that the best you can do? Come out and fight me yourself. Oh, good. Provoking. Um, well, yeah, it's okay. You guys we're are fine. just, I mean, we're wondering which direction to go. If they come to us, then... It well, eliminates yeah. the needing of direction to go. Well, we, we know where to go. We're going to go that mountain. To the bigger probably. Volcano <laughs> the yeah, we, we probably got to go that mountain. Volcano. Probably. Thinking. But yeah, we don't that, know. That's true. It was more of, do we still want to storm in now that all of our recent intel is probably wrong? Because we thought we were going to have to deal with Thieves' Guilds. This is probably not Thieves' Guilds. <laughs> sure it is. <laughs> well, I, 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 it might be. I, I don't know. I don't know how you have a thieves guild in the middle of a barren wasteland with no people to steal from. How far hey, does hey, the hey, barren hey, wasteland hey, hey. go? It's an honorable profession. It is. I'm, all I'm, I'm not that saying it's see. not. I'm not saying it's not. I'm just saying it's kind of hard to do that honorable profession when there's no one to do it to. <laughs> can Can uh, Albero, being a follower of Lindy's, Try to see if this is something that would have been done by the Obsidian Dragon, and if so, how large it would have been. Make a religion such check. Devastation. No idea. Well, dude, my rules have all been like two oh, no. and one <laughs> this oh, no. entire session. <laughs> no idea. In, I was just sitting there shaking his head. And as as far as your eyes can see, this is just desolate, molten wasteland. Uh, the last time, so our information didn't say it was going to be like this, right? Like, correct. By the, there, by the, there so was, it was somewhere in between that time and now that correct. this happened. Yeah, there there was nothing that indicated that this landscape has changed this much from the information that you knew. Yes. But with your decent nature check, it's been like this for at least a while. Yeah, so about the amount of time we'd expect the shut in to see this dragon. <laughs> Pretty much. Well, there goes my theory. I guess at this point it is just let's go to that mountain over there because that's the only distinguishable other feature we have and hope that ash phoenixes don't try to peck us from above again. Well, uh, Melisan probably knows that a dragon's territory can only be so big. So if, if the ability that we think he's using to say that we're here, that means we're close to his territory. And so it's probably that mountain is a decent guess that he's made his home there. If he can use this ability this far away from wherever he lives. 
Was there is it a response to my challenge? Make an intimidation check. Why not? Come on, that one here. As you are working your way back to this tower that your friends er erected, um, and you pass by a particularly <laughs> large uh, lava flow, it spurts, and from this lava flow, you see this pair of wings emerge as these two claws uh, pounce onto the ground ne next to you. And you oh. see this massive dragon standing next to you. And it goes, you're not worthy of my time. And uh, you can you can I, tell I can this. Differ. Well, you know, you make an intelligence check for me. <laughs> the dragon <laughs> appeared right next to you. Uh, how far off is this? He's what eight hundred, seven hundred feet away from you guys. I mean, depends on how long we're talking. So everybody else can see yeah. this that it's a spectral image. <laughs> But Todd, with that minus three intelligence, it's real. Right next right. to you. Uh, I I absolutely beg to differ. I am 100% worth your time. Did you even see how little your minions did? And I will go ahead and make a uh, flurry of blows at it. Yeah, go ahead. And... It's a ghost. <laughs> So, I mean, it is a spectral image, so you technically hit, even though you don't. <laughs> <laughs> so you make these wild swings at this dragon. Nothing seems to affect it. And it goes, once again, puny, not worth my time. However, well, if you seek an audience, come see me and my master in the largest volcano. In the largest volcano. Uh, I mean, the current largest volcano is that one over there, but this one that you just made is still growing, so it won't you might want to change layers. It won't be bigger. It won't be bigger. <laughs> Are you comparing volcano sizes? Okay. Is this a uh, volcano well, measuring if, contest right now? <laughs> oh my if goodness. you're saying that you're... <laughs> he's, you're... Literally, he's literally comparing one, like, miles off in the <sighs> distance to the one in front of him. And exactly. they're both the same size. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, well, if if you're telling me exactly where you are, and I will start walking that way. Albero is definitely going that way. Do we even know what he said? <laughs> I mean, you all heard this in your head as okay. well as like in the air around you. Can we get a leash on him first? The dragon or Albero? Both. Yes. <laughs> I mean, Question I will. Party. Would you like me to ritual cast Phantom Steed? So you can have uh, riding speed 100? Uh, do you uh, do it we have enough be... time to do enough of them? <laughs> Uh, how many do we, how many it takes me do we 10 have? minutes to cast one and they oh. last for an hour. Yeah, so how you long? can have six. How long does this fort them? last, by the way? What was that? I'm sorry. How long does this fort last, by the way? That has been. It's an item permanent. Yeah, permanent. Until you take it down. Permanent? Yeah, maybe, and then we can. We, maybe, we, it's like a foldable fortress. <laughs> I'm just going to put this down. There are, well, Albero being one of them, injured people. Albero is also just resurrected. So, even though we've, he's at eight hours, he's still negative three on all of his rolls. Like, on all of his... I forgot uh, about that. Attack rolls. So, maybe we should rest? Maybe? Yeah, Regain, we, we thought we were going to have some Since we know time. where it is, <laughs> since we know where it is, and if there are boss fights coming with minions... Maybe, maybe we should have be at full capacity. Just an idea. I like that idea a lot. That is a good idea. So we need three days. I am not there well, for that conversation. I, don't I am think, walking towards I don't a think, volcano. I don't think. I don't think it needs to <laughs> oh, take three yeah. days. Maybe well, one day. 
Well, every day you get knock one negative off of that. So you'd have a... That is that is true, but three yeah. days a long time a day That's true. in Lava <laughs> Wasteland. I mean, we, one, we... one eight and one six hour period is all I need now as a war for just six hours. Well, we don't have to be here for it. <laughs> Either that or one of you can carry me. Maybe the dumb one walking away towards that uh, <laughs> volcano there can do it. And I can just stay still. <laughs> well, you can. I, I don't know. It's up to the DM, but normally you can only take one of those six hour rests in 24 hours. But it's up to the DM if you can power through it. <laughs> just go completely cat. Well, my guy just goes completely catatonic at this point. Uh, still. Well, he still has his senses, but he just kind of goes boop, 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 boop. <laughs> it just shuts down. <laughs> Yeah, so you could rest as many times as you are within the 24 hours. However, only one of your points of uh, the minus one would go away. So, yeah, so we need to three so days. <laughs> should, should we should we rest? Why did we either way, here? either way, a negative we two. Have... We thought we were going to have city better time. than a negative three. I'm sorry, what was uh, that? I said a negative two is so much better than a negative three. <laughs> <laughs> Especially okay. if we're going to fight a, 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 a possible adult obsidian dragon. might be. As you guys are talking this over, Todd is just taking off towards the volcano. Yeah, but he's only like, we're talking he's maybe moving, action 80, dashing. 80, yeah, that was like maybe 80 feet around. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's. Uh, can somebody stop him? Can you bramble bush him? I mean, I, how hard do you want me to try to stop him? <laughs> I mean, can't you just teleport over there to him, grab him, and bring him back? Yeah. Do that then. <laughs> okay. We can see if we can get him to stay. So... <laughs> Look, I'm not the smartest person ever, but that guy is on a whole new level. If we could just get him back here for a couple of seconds to talk, maybe we give him food? Every six seconds, he's 80 feet farther away. So, <laughs> so what do you want me to do? You, do you want me to... Teleport, do it. Back? Get, that, get that lumbering oaf back here. Okay. Uh... Todd, come back, Todd. Todd, come back. <laughs> I tried. Sabanto and um, uh, Kojo will teleport a thousand feet. In front of him. <laughs> Poof. <laughs> but basically next to him. Next to him would be like, we are having a meeting on how to... Uh, what our next move is. They wish you to join in said meeting. Todd. I continue going. Mood will say, he keeps going. What do you want to do? <laughs> Offer him some of your wine. <laughs> uh, you'll hear, do you want wine? Can you, can you teleport me to him? Uh, yeah. Please do so. Okay, uh, so 12, uh, 18 seconds. You're next to Todd. <laughs> Todd. Todd. I know we just met. Uh, look. There are things that need to be done. I, I don't know if you know, but I have just come back from the dead a little while ago. Just, just a bit. Just a bit ago. And it would be very nice if we didn't charge full steam into a dragon's lair. If you could just give me a couple of seconds... It would be much appreciated. And I'd like to, if I could, I would like to roll persuasion on that. Does he? Can you roll for players? Does, uh, does, I, don't, I don't know. Are you persuaded? Like, because mood will be. Oh my god, that unlocks a lot for mood. <laughs> I, I will follow what Albero says. I will okay. say, um, yeah, of course we can uh, try to make a plan. Uh, I. Have, <sighs> apologize that I wasn't there to be able to save you from 
um, going unconscious and you're uh, just going to put a hand on Albert's just going to put a hand on your sh shoulder and go I understand your need to get in there as do I I I am just so exhausted so I appreciate you I appreciate you uh, agreeing and coming back if, 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 I, if I was well rested this would be an entirely different matter I'd be running with you uh, although you seem to be very fast, but uh, yes, please come back. I just need six hours just to get my head in a better position. I agree. You are um, you are a very formidable ally, and I would want you at your full strength. Thank you. I appreciate it. Shall we walk back? Uh, uh, sure, we can walk back. Would you, um, are you good to walk back? Do you want me to try to carry you? Do you want? No, no, I'm fine to walk back. Uh, I'm still getting used to this body of mine right now. Uh, it's probably better if I walk, actually. Maybe it'll clear my mind a little bit. Of course. Thank you. It'll kind of lean on you as he walks. <laughs> I am a dwarf, so. Well, he's gonna use you as a stool then, because he's like six. Because <laughs> he's like, like a walking stick, because he's like he's like six foot nine. <laughs> you want to use one of my uh, uh, quarter staffs as a walking stick? Uh, maybe, maybe <laughs> if you don't mind. Okay. Okay, we we start walking back then. I'm guessing. <laughs> All right. I, I think Vigo still has the broom of flying. I don't recall anybody taking it last time, so if you're worn out from walking, you might want to fly. Maybe. Can it carry two people? Uh, yeah, it, can. I, it can do up to 800 pounds, but it, it's, it slows down if it gets above a certain weight. That should be that able limit. to carry both of us. Well, it's an attunement item also. Oh, well. Okay. Uh, is it a tumor? I believe I yes. That, I, don't, I don't think broom is. I don't think the broom is. Let's find out. That's what makes it really good. <laughs> yeah, it's not like the so boots. It's one, of the, it's one of like the nine things that make it really boots good. Or whatever. Yeah, I think the. I think he's right. I think the broom is on the tomb. Uh -huh. Do -do -do. Broom of flying does not require a Oh, there you go. Okay, so yeah. So I'm guessing a broom pops up or flies over in front of us. Well, <laughs> this is much better. And they can only carry 400 pounds, not 800. Is it four? Okay. I'm, I'm not worried because I just uh, so, I, I have my wings. I don't worry about that now. It might not be. So it might not be able to carry two people. It might not be carry the two of them. Well, although although Albero is not as heavy as he used to be because he doesn't actually have a body. He's just armor. You're also made of pure You're also metal. also pure metal now. <laughs> <laughs> like condensed I thought pure I was, metal. I thought, I thought I was an empty shell. Yes, no, you, no, you're we, a we shell you that's made we're, of metal. We're trying to fill you. Oh, okay. You're, you're probably the heaviest one of all of us. Maybe I do have to walk in. <laughs> if I'm pure metal, then I'm pretty sure. I, I mean, as, as a meat bag, I was, you, you might as a meat bag, I, was probably, <laughs> I was probably around 270 pounds yeah. as a meat bag. Warforged weigh 270 to 300 pounds. Oh, okay. okay, so you're probably on that upper echelon okay. being so big. So 300 pounds. I'll walk with him. I want to show him my strength. Um, question for Mr. DM. Yes. The monk's dedicated weapon, uh, it says you, uh, where is it? When you finish a short or long rest, you touch one weapon and focus your key on it. Does that, it doesn't make it magical, right? No, um, link it. Oh, you did. Okay. Hmm.
If my unarmed attacks are magical... I would say no. Okay. I didn't think so, I was just curious. Hmm. I could make it a magic weapon if I needed to. But yeah, I, let's uh, let's head back and take a six-hour rest. I guess eight hours for people that need it. If people don't need it, then you can cut it down by two hours. I Even think we it... only needs four. Well, I mean, if we're going back. We Not don't really just in the fort. I I guess my question is, why would we take a rest in enemy territory if we don't have to? Because I'm completely exhausted from resurrection. Right. So you don't want to take a step through a shadowy portal and then take a sleep in a safe coffee bed and then home base. Let's do that. Okay. No, sleep in the lava <laughs> I mean, filled I mean, that's area. Just completely... This is completely <laughs> unexpected, by the way. We were supposed to show up, and there was supposed to be a town yes. here. Yes, we were supposed to have city, city shenanigans. was the initial plan. I don't know how much is going to happen in a three-day span, but if we could take a three-day rest, that would be amazing. But I, mean, I, get, I get if we can't. I mean, we don't really have a clock right now. Like, he knows we're here. There's no difference whether we disappear for three days and then reappear three days later. Well, it's three days of preparation for them. What, what do we expect them to prep besides I maybe they know plants and uh, a guy that punches things? Uh, we are dealing with a dragon. They're not the dumbest creatures in the world. Right. Right. I guess I'm more saying, like, they. I, I, I'm in the camp of they've either, either already prepped everything they need to prep and they weren't really, like, against the clock akin the flaming birds trying to come kill us or they don't know enough about us to prep effi uh, efficiently so having you be healthier will give us much more of an advantage than it's, giving them any prep time it's up to you guys whether or not you'd like to give me the three day rest to be at full strength or not I'll, I'll vote to give him the three day rest at this point he probably knows about all the other scene against we've already done. There's not much more prep he can do. This was just a flex on him to let us know that, hey, he can control this entire domain. So, yeah, I think three days is going to be fine. Okay. okay. Well, uh, I, I have a question. How much do we really know about Obsidian Dragons? We know all the basics from both Mel and the our ally. So we know lava, we know volcano based, we know he's is about it? an adult. Uh, we know. I don't think this is a dragon that I know of. Is it? Yes, this this was da this was what we did downtime that got, we were supposed to do in the planning session, but no one asked any questions or talked oh. about it. <laughs> this was open information for anyone that wanted to reach out and grab it, but it's stuff we have. So we have, like, high-level information on everybody. So that includes the dragons, they're typing, like, generic info, maybe not specific info, but, like, generic info on this type of dragon. It does, usually does X, <laughs> and ha probably has, like, this kind of breath weapon, normally. Like, if it, he's got something special, like, we, we won't know that, but, like, we have top-level view of everything now, thanks to our... Uh, Thanks to our turncoat ally. So, Obsidian Dragon, we know it's an adult, it's got lava powers, and we've seen it can make volcanoes now. Here's here's a wild idea for the DM. Mm -hmm. If I if we were to take a three-day rest, and I were to meditate and hold my uh, my uh, 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 my brain is blanking right now, sorry. If I was to hold on to my holy symbol, would there be a chance that I would plane shift to Lindy's? If I really concentrated on it. Do you want to go there? 
Yes, because if I talk to Lindy's, Lindy's could give us information on Obsidian Dragons, possibly. Can I bring him to where he wants to go? I don't see why not. I'll bring him to where he wants to go. Uh, I'd, I'd like to vote that we move the entire rest of the party somewhere else first. Yeah, th yeah I, this no, is no, assuming no, no. during yeah, the this rest. Is during the rest. During yeah. the rest. Okay. If, if, we, if we vote rest. Right okay. now we have four vote, three votes rest. Okay. Uh, Melisan, what do you think? That Mel voted rest in the Melisad chat. Voted, okay. yeah, Vigo yeah, votes yeah. rest. Okay, so we have five votes rest. Okay, my majority has also, it, so we're going to go rest. rest. I could scry. Six votes rest. <laughs> okay, we voted rest. Majority has it. Okay, so Long I will go. get us back to home base through shadowy portal and then play chip to the darkness of nothing. It's nice, calm, quiet, dark, and then we're back in the base. <laughs> so I, I, I would like to take the six uh, at least six hours first. Just to get something back before I meet with Lindy's. I will bring you when you want to go. As long as it's not interfering with the devil time. But I still don't know when that is. <laughs> Wait, what devil time? The, it, I still don't to Tiflis a uh, teleport. Oh, that's true. Whenever he wants that. It could be a thousand years from now, but whenever he wants that. He said he would give me not crucial time, and this would be not crucial time if he wants it. But yes. There, I'm changing for now. All right. Okay. So, where are you teleporting him to? I don't know. Where does he want to go? Where do you want to go? <laughs> so, I would like to, uh, I would like to travel to the plane where I first met Lendy's. What is the plane that you first met, Lendy's? Oh, Iandis, you mean? What's up? Where you first met Iandis? Iandis. Yeah, oh yeah, excuse me. So that okay, Whoops. that's why I was confused. Yeah. Um you would have uh, trying to think. You would have met him actually on this plane. On the material plane. On the material plane. Yes, which is what the plane that you're currently on. Okay. Would I have any idea where that is? Like, would you have any idea where you met him? Yeah. Hold on, you're trying to meet Iandis? Are you trying to meet the BBEG right now? <laughs> no, 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 not, no, 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 no. My god, the god that I've pledged my paladin powers to. Oh, 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 oh. Lindy's, the, the, the god, the dragon god of justice. Yep, 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 okay, I'm sorry. I thought you were talking something different, okay. Um, the first, the first dragon rider we fought was named Iendis. Oh, that's also awesome. so, No, 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 I'm no, no, guessing, no. Is... Oh, I'm guessing that we were confusing the spelling of the names. No, 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 no. This okay. is, this is, this is Lindy's. Lindy's, yeah, okay. Yeah. Maybe a, um, right, because when you would have met Linda, when I met him, I was randomly jumping through planes. Correct. That's why I'm wondering if I would know where he is or what plane I was on. I would guess he would, in our conversation, he probably would have told me where he is, but maybe not. I don't know. Yeah, you. God. You would have yeah. known you met him on Mechanus. Okay. Oh. Then that's where we need to go. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Uh, do I know the proper way to get to Mechanus? Like, I could do it my way, but that, that, that might cause trouble. <laughs> Um, why would it cause trouble? Is, is it, Mech Mechanus is the plane of law. Yes. Yeah. So if you don't exactly. do things right, <laughs> you get in trouble. <laughs> it's the that's... DMV plane. Yeah, it's the DMV plane. <laughs> if right, I that's... show up in the back of the DMV plane, it's not a good sign. <laughs> can you tor Can you tell? Can you drop me? I can, can go. And I can also. Back? 
I could shunt you there, yeah, but... Shunt, shunt me there, then. But, again, if I drop you in the Plane of Mechanus, in the back where you're not supposed to be, we might not see you again. <laughs> I seem to be able to jump planes. <laughs> I mean, I can too, but it doesn't mean that you're not going to get in trouble. <laughs> well, I'm still, I'm still following a... Following a uh, tenant that I'm that I have followed pretty uh, religiously. Yeah, I, I'm not to, saying you're not going to. Gonna get, I'm not saying you're going to get in trouble with your guy. I'm saying you might get in trouble with the other citizens of that plane, well, specifically a big eyeball, <laughs> a big eyeball that has a very sticker stickler for the rules. <laughs> uh, if I showed up there, I'm pretty sure I was breaking some rules. Um, you would know that there's a difference between a curse that's landing you there or being sent there on or purpose. Being, or being there on the purpose. Yes. Yeah, so do I do I know like a this Maybe is the gate to drop people off to enter Mechanist where they can start their paperwork journey? Do I know at least that area? <laughs> um because I could I, you could do it through like the city of doors. That that's a that'd be a normal portal in. Again, if you get into the city of doors and you gotta do a lot of walking, it's just, oh, I mean, you can do it. I will say. Is there like an airport I could drop them off at for planar travelers trying to go to Mechanus? <laughs> there have sure. to be, right? Yeah, I know there, there have to be. I'm yeah. just wondering, like. Yeah, okay, so I will yeah, yeah, you, get us you would know. You, there. You, you're starting to become yeah. well traveled enough where you, you yeah, would have been around for a long time. Yeah. I've been along for a round for a long time. Yeah. Okay, so I will bring us there. Be incredibly sickened by this plane since I'm fey based, <laughs> and be like, "How long do you want?" Because I I hate this. This is also a plane I'm not happy with. <laughs> uh, a lot of rules. See. This is I need to I need to find him right. Yeah. yeah. Give me, give me, uh, give me eight hours. I can give you eight hours. I will and... come pick you up in eight hours. <laughs> All right. And uh, I go searching for Lindus. I'm going back. <laughs> All right. Um. So as you get ready to leave to go search for uh, Lindus, um, you are directed to get into a queue of a whole bunch of other different. People, beings, creatures, um, waiting to be able to gain entry into Modra, uh, Mechanus. Okay. I'm guessing this is a very long line. Yes. I'm going to yeah. come back in eight hours. He's going to move like four spaces up. Just. I was going to say three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um,. Okay, I I start walking past the line. You start walking past the line, like to cut them, or that's, to that's just try and plan. go through. Uh, I need to see him. I mean, this is a place of law and efficiency. Yes, law and efficiency here. I get it. There. Uh, uh, it's also. I'm also on a mission. I'm not just some random person coming in. I've been here. I've been sent on a mission. You mean you're above the you law? I'm not. I'm not, a, I'm not. A, I'm, not a, I'm not above the law. Anyway, but but if you think about it this way, if you think about it this way, it's like, it's like. When you think about it in the way of like the law and everything else, there are always hierarchies in everything. There, everything has a hierarchy, or else Lindy's every time he left and came back would have to stand at this line to get back in, right? I mean, he probably does. <laughs> I, I, I'm pretty sure he doesn't. So yes, sure there is a hierarchy. However, you are not on that hierarchy list high up enough to skip the I line. Think it, I think it's still incredibly funny that he does have to do all this paperwork every time he leaves and goes, and that's why we never see him. 
<laughs> Did I stand in this line the first time? Because no, because I feel like I feel like I would have blinked out of existence from this plane before I made it to the front of the line. You ha you you have blinked onto Modron or I'm sorry, uh, Mechanism a couple times. However, you've never blinked in there properly, so you've never had to wait in line to actually get gain entrance. Um, you would know from your two v previous visits that being caught not having gone through the proper channels, you can get in trouble. But you were never really worried about that because, hey, I blink out all the time. Mm. <sighs> and you do see the little clockworks known as Modrons running around with their little weapons and trying to keep the lines orderly and things like that. Okay. Is there anything else other than the Modrons? Hmm. As far as like guards, as far as anything that's thinking enough to have a conversation with, yeah, I mean, there's plenty of beings in like in the lines and whatnot. No, not uh, in the line. Something that can get me past the line. Make a perception check for me. Like, is there anybody but Motrons working there? Yeah, exactly. Right. That's why you're making a perception, perception. check. Oh God, perception. Okay. Come on, I've been rolling like ones or twos. Hook me up. Oh, 14. Okay. Uh, looking around, you do see that there is um, a dragonborn that looks to be like a clerk at some point with a whole bunch of different... There's books on his desk and paperwork, and he's trying to, like, he's sitting with somebody who's very frustrated and seems to be aggravated at this dragonborn, and he's got this most exasperated look on his eyes with his spectacles at the very end of his uh, snout, just, like, rubbing the temple, his temples. Is he off to the side? A little bit, yeah. Okay, I uh, I go, sir, sir. Do do you mind if I approach? He says, um, you need to wait your turn. I need to finish with this person, and then you, I can deal with you. Uh, what if I could? Uh, what if they didn't bother you anymore? Um, how so? I I, I don't know. Uh, maybe uh, I were to uh, you know, strike a deal with them. I'll give you a shot. Okay. I walk up and I go, good sir, I have a very pressing and important mission uh, back on, uh, wait, what plane are we on? I know it's not, is it Firas? Uh You are uh, currently on Mechanus. No, 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 I'm saying where we, where the rest of the party is. Uh, that's considered the material plane. Okay, well, on the material plane that has to do with a lot of evil, evil Dragons and the riders, and I was just wondering if I could please talk to the good sir here. Uh, I, I need, I need to, I need to find an audience with Lenden. Well, that's nice and all, but I have been waiting in that damn line for three days now, and then they say they don't have my paperwork, even though I submitted it in triplicate to make sure it was there and proper. And now they don't know where it is. So uh, unless you can fix that, I need to talk to him. In triplicate, you say? Yes! Oh, I, I, I exactly know. Where, where are you from? I am from the city of Brass. You're from the city of Brass. Ah, I can see your dilemma. Uh, well, I, I, in triplicate, you say? If I fill out these forms for you, uh, if, I, if, I, if I take them to Lindis myself... I'm one of his paladins, you see, and I'm just trying to gain an audience. If I take it to Lindy himself, you think this would uh, alleviate your dilemma? I'm I'm not here to see no lettuce. Well, I, I I understand, I understand, but I'm sure once I talk to him that maybe, just maybe, I could get your forms into the right hands instead of having them get lost in the bureaucracy. Darby lost. I don't want to have to fill out more. No, 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 no. Do you, do you have some with you? I'm I'm sure you made copies. No. I no no I you so you fill them out and then you send them in and you're supposed to be they're supposed to have them all. Well, I tell you what, I'll fill one out for you if you let me talk to the good sir here to see if I can see Lindis. I I will fill it out for you. You you just sit back and relax, and I will take it to Lindis myself, and I will try to get it to the front of the line if I can. Make a persuasion check. Natural 20? Says, all right, fine. I'm watching you, though. What's Damn your nice name? 
What's uh, sorry? I, I'm excuse me. I'm sorry. What did you say? What's your name? Oh, I am Albero Huntley, the paladin of of Lindis. Then swear no to me, Albero, that you will take care of this problem for me. Oh, I swear I will do my best and take care of this problem once I see Lindis. You feel this faint trickle of magic, like shiver down goes down your spine. Uh oh. <laughs> Very well. Thank I you. Appreci I appreciate your your uh, confidence in me. And thank you for letting me talk to the good sir here in front of you. He just so kind sir. of goes out to things to let you do what you're doing. So, sir, um, now that we can talk, I need to see Lindis. It's very urgent. Um, on the material plane, and I understand that time doesn't quite work here the same, but on the material plane, um, there is a very urgent matter. Uh, you see the dragons there and a couple of the very, very, well, do I, I know what Aiden's up to, right? Not in the way of like his like grand scheme, but like what he's doing in general. Mm, not really. Okay. Well. Okay, well, you see, uh, he, he has corrupted a lot of dragons on the material plane, uh, and they all have riders. And you see, they are tipping the scales in the worst way on the material plane. And I have been, uh, and I have been, um, I have been sent by Lindis to that material plane to, to balance the scales, you see. You know how much Lindis likes having the scales balanced, right? He's just, look, talking... he, he's just looking at you, waiting for you to finish whatever spiel you're doing. So, so all I'm trying to say is that I need to see Lindis in a material plane decent amount of time. So that the whole thing doesn't get completely blown up. Like he he completely destroyed an entire city and is and has completely reconstructed the landscape into 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 uh, uh, volcanoes and magma and everything else. And he's gonna do the rest of it to the mag to that plane. And I don't think Lindis would like that balance to be completely thrown off. That's why he that's why he sent me back to the material plane to do what I'm doing now. But I need to talk to him. I need information that will help. And I'm sure, I am sure that he would want, want me to be there and he would appreciate immensely if you helped me. Please. And I get down on my knees. Okay, make a persuasion check. Okay. He says, well, you uh, make a very compelling argument. Um, and he fills with some other papers real quick and doesn't find what he's looking for. He opens up a drawer. You see just like messes of papers within the drawers. Shuts that drawer, opens up another one. Uh, finally, he pulls out a plain, or a plain, a uh, piece of paper. And he look, moves his spectacles up his nose or his snout. And looks and says, ah, oh, yes. Um, Lendis, he uh, is currently not here. You wouldn't, be a <laughs> you wouldn't be a privilege to tell me where, would you? Uh, that, I'm not really supposed to say that, unfortunately. Um, but I, I, I can tell you this. He is looking into, um, an issue that is supposed to be happening on the Plane of Water. The Plane of Water, you say? Yes, apparently, oh, no. apparently um, there's these creatures that have kind of taken it over, so he's went over there to see what he can do. That's exactly what I'm trying to do with, with the material plane. I, I appreciate your help. Uh, the plane of water. Do, do you have <laughs> any... Well, well, you're not your timekeeper, I understand. Uh, you wouldn't happen to have heard from anybody else when he might be back? I have no idea, sir. I'm sorry. Ah, uh, well... I see. Um, well, I, I, I mm. is there, 
Mm. <laughs> I'm trying to formulate something here. <laughs> uh, uh, <dead> end. <laughs> um, so, um, I guess I have a uh, a quite short uh friend to catch up to, uh, so I can get some paperwork done and um. And uh, hopefully be uh, going to the water plane soon. Um, if 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 you do uh, uh, know when he comes back, can you please send him a message for me? I know you're not a messenger. I understand, but I would, I would very much, I would very much be in, in in gratitude of you if you could just let him know that that I was here. That's it. Just just Albero Huntley. Was here looking for you, material plane burning, dragons causing chaos, and so on. <laughs> he gives you an odd look up and it goes, I will let him know. Oh, thank you very much. I, I so appreciate it. And I give him, I get up from my knees and I give him a bow. And I go, I, I have someone to catch up to. <laughs> and I go running back to the guy that I need to do paperwork for. <laughs> All right. Um, I have eight hours. <laughs> yep. Um, Todd, what are you doing? Um, I would like to go and find a monk temple. Okay. Um, you guys are in Vluxfer, so yes, you would. There is a monk temple in Vluxfer. Um... Is this more of a meditation monk temple, or is it more of a combat monk temple? Uh, they have both sections. Okay. Um, I would like to go into... Uh, towards the more combat-focused part of the temple. And see if I can spar with a couple of the um the the other monks in that area. Oh, excuse me. Um yeah, that's that's easy enough to do. Okay. Alrighty. It, that'll be what I'll be doing for the next like four hours. Okay. Uh Silas? Um, so I'm I just sang out some spells. I'm just gonna be uh praying for the next couple of days, and I have this weird inkling that if uh uh Alberta does meet up with his god, I'm gonna get in <laughs> trouble, but we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Okay, I have to ask, why do you think you'll get in trouble? Why do you think you'll get in trouble? I think Moon will get in trouble. <laughs> uh, I didn't know he... my god caused such a problem. <laughs> I, I think, think I'm going to get in trouble because I was the um, primary mechanism that kind of spurred the transformation into... Um, anyway, yeah, I... might be, he might be happy. I put him there. <laughs> I, a little bit of both, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, he's now a mech. He's now a mech, a mech almost. So yeah, maybe he'll be happy that we did that. He's not I, a fleshy body. No way, he's you happy made, that we made, just. You made me an instrument of his vengeance. Yeah, there's there no way he's happy that we destroyed the plate of water, and now he had he had to alter reality to fix it. You destroyed no. the plate of water, god damn it! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think your god's busy for a, he, at least a little bit of now, time. To for be the fair, love of God, I would have been nice to be privy to that. <laughs> to I didn't fair. know it was him. I was gonna go fix it. I thought it was the time god, but nope. He he's ended up <laughs> his, his, apparently it's, it was his turn on the totem pole to go fix the. Yeah, oh, to be fair, a barrel is not have you guys too. To be fair, a barrel does not have history on what happened to the plate of water. So, Mood, since it's your fault, how about you let him know exactly what happened? I was gonna, it, 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 what was gonna happen when I picked him up? He was like, "Hey, how was it? How'd you do? Did you get anywhere? So you haven't left the room." And he was like, "Yeah, no, uh, it's something we, about we he had to go to the plate of water to fix something." I was like, "Oh no!" <laughs> oh God. So we had a 
Halloween? Was it Halloween one shot? Halloween or Christmas, one of the two. I forget. Why, like, it was like, why we, can't my why can't my interactions with my god be as easy as like getting a soul out of a fucking so, jar? So we had a we had a Halloween one shot and uh Gremlins got introduced to the world. Yep. From the TV movie from the movie. So they have a weird interaction when they interact with water. God. And Mood was like I'm a chaotic little mother. You infinitely I'm gonna... multiplied <laughs> fucking gremlins on a water world. I sent it to the plane of did? water. With... I sent one to the plane of water to just be like, yeah, this is what he'd do. And he sent one to the plane of water. Me and and then you're gonna like... have words, mood. And then we had a long rest. <laughs> and then the whole one shot didn't happen and never existed in the first place. And I'm like, hmm. Mm. It's back. This is it's high like level. <laughs> well, well, no, it, it's a god. God did things, and now we know which god did things. So yeah. I gave a lot of work to your god, <laughs> and I mean a lot of work. Yeah, uh... <laughs> for basically what amounts to a practical joke. Uh... <laughs> if it if Look. that doesn't sum up mood, I don't know what does. Look this. Do what I do when you're. When I guess you're I'm gonna be stuff. cleaning up more problems than just dragons on fucking the material plane. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna be cleaning up mood. Possibly, <laughs> we don't know. Oh god. <laughs> no. So. Well, that took a turn. Uh, so you begin to start the paperwork, Albero. Um, just make a dexterity check for me, real quick. Oh god, dexterity. Well, at least... Okay. You could have brought Vigo along. <laughs> All right. So yeah. So you start working on the paperwork, and um, you make sure it's legible, and et cetera, et cetera. All right. So Vigo, as you are um seeking <laughs> out information on the Ash Phoenix and the Obsidian Dragons, et cetera, um, you do not need to rely on Vance. Thank goodness, because we know you are loath to do so. Even though and he does load. offer his assistance. And you I eyeball him. him and see if I can figure out if there's any physical attachments between his person and that spell book is. Uh, he always has actually you don't see the spell book, so ah, so I so he does leave it behind at time, so good to know. Okay. Quite possibly. All right. Um the biggest thing that you learn about the Ash Phoenixes is their rejuvenating ability. Which I suspected at some point. Okay. Uh, and you also learn how they are created. Um, when I shared, when I showed the Ash Phoenix to you guys, did it show you the whole three paragraphs or whatever? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so you learn that they are created by mass sacrifices of burning beings on a, on a pyre. So, like on a battlefield, like on a battlefield, like entire cities being destroyed, like huh. an entire city having a volcano spout right through it. Mm -hmm. How um, many people? Uh, like rough estimate, rough. Uh, to actually make a shadow f or an ash phoenix would yeah. would take you thousands of people. Seems like a really weak creature for thousands of people. <laughs> But yeah, mood, no. mood, mood, mood. Do Something not provoke the DM. <laughs> no, no, not that. No, this this mood actually thinking like if I if I was gonna sacrifice a thousand people, I'd rather have a thousand skeletons. Mood, you've already pissed off that one deity that we know. <laughs> <laughs> like when you say that, I'm just like, I, I, that, that's that's what mood's thinking. It's just like, it seems like a lot of work for not that much. Like, oof. <laughs> you know? Okay. So, all right, basically what... Um, so this thing will uh, reappear in one to ten days. Mm -hmm. um, and Year it always it starts created. out within... It always starts out with within uh, the same area that w the, whatever site created it originally. Uh, it'll reappear at the same site. Okay, so... Uh, and I think there is a way to the 
initial paragraph said there's a way to cleanse the area so it stops them from regenerating. Uh, me- yeah, mechanically, yeah. what is that? The holy rites of purify. Uh, like uh, um, Alice? no. What's the uh cleric spell? Hollow. Yes. How? Hall- yes. Like you would have to hollow yeah. the ground enough times to make it permanent and stick. It didn't say that. It just said hollow the ground. It didn't say it had to make it permanent. You, it probably has to be hollowed when they would die. Right, because if the Ashes Fetus birth site has not been hollow purified, a destroyed so it, it seems like you need to destroy it while the place is hollowed. At least that's how I'm how I, I thought yes. the hollowing would actually well, I I'm sorry, I'm gonna ask the DM this. Would the actual process of casting the hollow spell uh, not destroy the site? Much like if you I think I think Silas actually hallowed that um, crypt underneath uh, that one city we were in. Mm-hmm. Um, and I believe that stopped the undead from coming back and Correct. So, you, walking so the streets. you would have to cast a hollow, and it takes 24 hours to cast it. So, Okay, so, so Silas, time to step up again. Yeah, we might be able to... It might also work if, if they are destroyed already, and then you hollow the area. It, that might also solve that problem. We, so. we first need to find that area, as well right. as... Um, I don't think if I stand around for 24 hours, the uh, dragon and the rider are going to like that. So I think we, they need to go first. Uh, concur with that, sir. And we'll leave all the uh, religious uh, stuff to you because that is your forte. But I, I agree. I think I think it's uh, get rid of the dragon and the rider first, and then we need to search out the site. But we may wind up, you know, encountering these things uh, more than once between now and successfully um, destroying them. So, um, uh, well, I we, I, we need to be prepared for that. I also think that with that information that you provide us, that it is a thousand bodies or a thousand souls need to create one of them. And there's three of them. I'm mm-hmm. going to probably want to spend a couple of days there, try to not just hollow it out, but maybe also perform some um, last rites for people. Another, another Again, question. I, I bow to your expertise in this area, but I think that's a fantastic idea. Yes, that is a great idea. How many people do we think would have been in the capital city? In the capital city? Yeah, as a <clears throat> rough the, guess. The last numbers you would have had would have been probably close to 30,000. So do we think there might be 27 more of these things flying around somewhere? I'd like to hope not. I'm going to go probably not. a good now, dozen. Now, if you could take all of them out at once, then it would definitely be 30 of these things with one make a volcano. <laughs> That's pretty worth it. <laughs> yeah, but or, let's think about what it takes to actually create one, because again, I don't understand... Vigo doesn't understand all that stuff, but it's got to take a bit of doing to create one of these things, much less three of these things. So, just just a thought. Um, Do we have a timeline on about how long it takes to make one of these, besides just the casualty? Um, no, you guys would have no idea. Okay, so it could be either or. It could be that it takes a long time and they only got three of them, or it could be they have 27 more flying around being guards other places, and we only happen to counter three if they're, if it's covering the whole area. Okay. Well, good to know, but uh, I'm, I'm glad to hear that uh, you know our, our resident uh, cleric is thinking in advance, and I appreciate that because uh, I think this fits kind of right up his alley and neck of the woods along with uh, Madame. Um, who, you know, he does worship so faithfully. Um, then I think that would set things to right for him to do that. So uh, at least I, I feel I feel that we needed to know this information to plan for our next move going forward. And, and Silas... I didn't have to ask that. And Silas, if we think that they might have more of these... You have a very impressive 6th level ability spell that can deal with 
elementals and or undead. And it really doesn't matter how many of them there are. Uh, let me go to that, because uh, I'm still I'm still having trouble learning all the spells I have access to. Um, which one would that be? Forbiddance. We could. Forbiddance. Yeah, we could set up, and you could pop that down because it's a ritual spell, so it won't even take your slot. And then, if any of those elemental type creatures show up, they'll just kind of explode. <laughs> Which will be a is, good... it a con- is it a concentration spell? No, it's just you, you pop it down, it lasts 8 to 24 hours, and it just deals 5d10 radiant or necrotic damage to any of the chosen types. Interesting, it, it okay. Shows it from a lot of the extra planar creatures. So that's, it'd be a, that's it'd an be impressive a... ability. Yeah, it'd be a really good, like, if we think there's 27 of them that we need to deal with, it might be a good idea to pop that down and then engage the dragon guy so that you can't really, like, call them for backup. Be like, oh, I'm having trouble, and then eight of them fly from the ceiling. <laughs> if there's three of them, why not Why not do that anyway? True. True. Why, why, why even have to deal with them if, if we can use this as a benefit to the uh, entire party? Yeah, no, like, it, it's a good idea, but, like, three of them, it was a little, like, not high priority since we saw that uh, uh, less than a third of our fighting force could take out the three of them without a big sweat. Right, but... Which is what we just saw, so, like, right. it's like, all right, because it, it will take a little bit more maneuvering on our part to get... Because it takes 11 minutes or one minute. Minutes. Or, so it'll take 20 minutes or 10 minutes... For him to get this spell down, depending if he wants to use the slot or not. And then, so it'll take some more strategic, like, could put us in more danger planning comparative to, like, oh, if there's just three of them, it might be less dangerous just to fight them. Comparative to if there's 27 of them, (laughs) then taking the risk to put this spell down would be worth it. I I would say it's going to depend on um... If we can have time to set up before we fight or not, if I use my spell slot for it. If I can avoid using my spell slot for it, because I have some, I have healing Grim Harvest, which I think Grim Harvest seems bonkers to me, but that's just me. Um, I'll try to craft this as a ritual. We try to get people in, and we fight the dragon in that area, and we just have to make sure he doesn't leave while the things kind of ping in towards us. Makes sense. Okay, no, I, I like the I like the way you're thinking. That's uh, again good forethought, and I like that you're thinking forward. So, um, okay, uh, but I believe that we are still waiting for Mood to bring back our Paladin from about... the Plane of Law and Order, where Mood is probably not the most welcome creature at any time. It... It's not, it's not that I'm not welcome, it's just it's very annoying, and I'm very likely to piss people off when I go there. <laughs> if not already have pissed people off, but who knows who I pissed off. I a, and then Mood just kind of badges. Chan- <laughs> I, had a, I had a better chance just randomly skipping there. <laughs> when you take me there, I should have just randomly skipped. <laughs> yeah, but you would then showed up and the guy wouldn't have been there. <laughs> <laughs> Or I might have showed up on the water plane, he would have been pissed off, and I would have come back and been like, what the fuck? <laughs> well, I th- I think the water plane now is okay, but this, like, water plane in, like, another phased reality is not. <laughs> and that's what he's dealing with. It doesn't work, help that time is all wibbly-wobbly. I work wobbly. for the dragon yep, god of fucking wobbly. justice and balance. <laughs> Gremlins. <laughs> Hashtag move. And you fucking threw a gremlin in it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to go pick him up after the eight hours. <laughs> hold on, hold on. I want to know. Talking to this guy, what what is his, like, what is his paperwork for? Like, what is he trying to do? What's he trying to do? He's just trying to gain access to the city. He's just trying to gain access to the city. For yes. what reason? Uh... You see, while, the... while I'm sitting there talking to him about his paperwork and filling out his paperwork for him, <laughs> he's looking to make a purchase of an item. 
um, that's supposed to help him with crops growing at, on his farm. And this is in the material plane? No. Oh, this is on a completely different plane. He's from the city of Brass. Oh, yeah, that's right. City of Brass. He's trying to buy a that's watering right. I wrote that down. <laughs> I should have looked at that. City of Brass. Um, so, Frasque, what are you doing? Uh, I was thinking I could try scrying on the dragon. Okay. Unless people think that's a really bad plan. Sounds like the uh, best plan. I'm not Can there. you scry on the dragon? Like, do you know, do we know enough about him didn't to get the, the scry off? Didn't the dragon just do an astral projection thing? That's true, we, so we, we, we did see him. If he saw exactly what the dragon looks like. Honest projection. True. And uh, I have painting skills, so I could paint a picture of the dragon to use as a focus thing. And we had a really good description of what the dragon is. Yeah, no, if you can get it off, uh, he already knows what he already knows us ish, so there's no like breaking that thing. So I, th I think that's a great idea. And I don't think you know if someone is scrying on you or attempting to. Right? Some some beings can. Like if you tried to scry on Sabanto, he'll see it. <laughs> it's just a little orb that just floats there, in a little color. And then some have even more where they can like. If they see that, they can do things to you through your own scrying, which is... Though those are more powerful. I don't know if the dragon probably can't do it. Uh, our BBEG, I'm going to assume he could probably do it. But that's just because he's a super powerful magic user. <laughs> so, I mean, I, who knows what he could do. Uh, but, yeah, no, I, I think scrying is probably a great idea. If you can get it off. <laughs> if you get it off. I mean, there's a good chance it won't be successful. Requires f the dragon failing a saving throw. You know what? I can just click that so we can all see it. Is that what you're doing? Save a 19, nice. All right, so. Um, oh, go ahead. So first I create a painting mm -hmm. of the drawing, of, of the dragon based on us on seeing him. Yep. And the descriptions that we got beforehand. All righty. So that'll give the dragon a minus two. I'm assuming there's no way we can have a garment that the dragon used to wear or a body part. Yeah. So where does it fall for have heard of the target slash have met the target? I would say it's more secondhand than firsthand because you've met a projection of the target. Can the dragon like, fail? Like, can like the dragon likeness, fail? Likeness or picture? Oh uh, yes, I the believe. dragon can fail. Okay. DC's only nineteen. Or the DC's nineteen, so he the dragon can technically fail this. You got a likeness or picture? So the you you concentrate and think of the dragon, and as your consciousness begins to leave your body to go spy on the dragon, it snaps back into your body. He did succeed, not by much though. All right, Fail, failed on the dragon, but then I could try again on the uh, the, the phoenix Thunder? creatures. Oh, the phoenix, because they would be their, their ashes would be somewhere. Uh, you might have to wait a day. That would actually be a really good way to see if... Uh, it, uh, it's 20... The the, the, the target. Yeah. The, the well, that, target, I can't cast again on the same target 
Well, like, hours. so the spell will automatically fail if they're not on the same plane of existence. So you'll cast it, and then you'll get a spell failure instead of a success. So you can tell if they're back or not with this spell if you want to cast it three times in a day. Well, I mean, it's knowledge. I mean, if we're, we're if only on our first day of else. rest, if we're if yeah. we have three days, we're only on our mm -hmm. first day of rest. Yeah, and then if it goes through and they fail, they might be with more phoenixes if they have more phoenixes. Right, and then if they have more phoenixes. Yeah. So if, if if yeah, no, that's a great idea. So you're describing the ice, the ash phoenixes now. Yes. Oh, first I'll make a painting of them. That right, have yeah. A thing I can look at. Okay, yeah. Um, as you go to focus on the Ash Phoenix, your consciousness shifts as you see one Phoenix, two Phoenix, three Phoenix. You just, your consciousness keeps shifting between these different Ash Phoenixes. Um, all in all, you, you track there's about 50 of them before your body snaps back. Your guys just back back in your body. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. 50 more. And they're not all in the same location either. They're in multiple locations across this continent. Um, make a pers uh, perception check for me. <clears throat> yeah, and unfortunately it was it was... Going so fast between the different phoenixes, you couldn't really see anything but, like, a brief glimpse of each phoenix. And you don't even know if that's all of them. Okay. By the, by the way... On the with plus the side, I have an intelligence of 20. So I can create an illusion and somewhat have voted, uh, like brain the, the photo memory thing i did it yep the, the not being able to notice things that are important the first time but being uh having really good memory and then creating three-dimensional images of being able to replay what i watched so maybe other people can catch what i missed Sure. Okay, so I gather our member party members that are here, and I put on a ten minute play of the chaos I just watched. Mm -hmm. So yeah, forbiddance might be very necessity. <laughs> yep. Would yeah. that allow anyone else to roll perception? That's a lot. Uh, no, that was, that was a perception as you were scrying to see, like, you know, what was in the area around the different phoenixes. Yeah, so we, we, we look at it, and again, it all looks like a landscape. Yeah. And we, we don't know anything. Maybe, um, what's his name? Might, like, know something, but again, it's all barren landscape. Anyway, what's his name? Uh oh my god. Uh, do, 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 do. I finally remember the term. Photographic memory. Would an yes. intelligence twenty grant someone photographic memory? Not necessarily. There's a, there's a feat for it. <laughs> yeah. Uh Sitovan. Sitovan might be able to give us a different look because he's been the year before. But again, when he was here it was different. But like if he get, if he ever got if one of those shops was of like any of the coast because they're he is a water based place like it, it is on the coast so I mean he might be able to tell us like oh this shot might be from here <laughs> but I don't know how much that gives us anyway like what what are we looking for if we're looking through these pictures. I muted. Were you asking me? Anyone, anyone. Oh. As we're looking through these pictures, like, what are we? What do you think we're looking for? Anything useful? Yeah. So I mean, uh, yeah. I, I don't see anything. 
But we now know there's 50 of these things. But we also know I mean, they're not all together at the same location. That's true. Yeah. So that's a useful information. How... Like, were they, like, all over the continent? Could we have gotten that from the pictures? Like, all over his territory? I'll, I'll say at least yes for that one, because I did, t I did tell him that, so. Okay. So, we wouldn't have to fight all of them at once. But it... So, th so this is good information to give our leader, because she's going to have to fight all of them. Well, not her, but, like, her leading our or our organization is going to have to fight all of them <laughs> so good job you've definitely helped our organization out make it so we probably won't lose a lot of people to <coughs> phoenixes <laughs> and i can scry three times a day do we know who the rider is His name's Zevi. <laughs> so we do know his name at least. He was. Do we think he was the one talking? Well, the voice said the... there's an intruder master. The yeah, voice on the dragon exactly... said something. Yeah. To alert him. Exactly. Yes. That's what, we, I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Do we know who the rider is? Because we might be able to try scry scrying the rider instead of the dragon. Yes. Because they're probably together, I would guess. So and when if not, the, he's probably in an important place. When the apparition appeared and spoke to Todd, it was the same exact voice that told you guys that said, there's intruders here. Would a rider consult his dragon as master? No, the dragon no. is the one who considers his rider the master. Okay. The dragon is the one who warned his master that you guys were there. Okay, okay. so we... So they're, they're either together... They, they, I'm guessing they have to be close to each other. If not, then he could be someplace even more valuable, and we could pick up information from another place, possibly. Uh at least so far, I don't think any of them have been apart from each other. So it's well, a decent assumption go. to say that they're together. Well, that might be that might be a shot. I mean, if it, we're not really wasting anything since we're, you know, since we are. And you, yeah, you've heard of them, so you can at least try. Yeah, you can at least try. <sighs> I'm assuming we don't know what they look like. Uh, you could probably get a dis. Oh, and I can. Get you a. Does Sitovan sleep? Uh, Sitovan. Hold on. Um, yeah, he'd sleep, and you would okay, know that because you him. you banged Sitovan. Yeah, I can get him a perfect picture overnight. There <laughs> you go. Don't ask Mood That's how he something. does it. You, uh, I'm not going to. Trust me, you don't want to I don't to want know. to know anything more. He's just, no, he, you he, don't. I'm in trouble already. <laughs> that is what he looks like. He's a dragonborn. He's a dragonborn. Well, there you go. You could try scrying him. Well, we'll make a painting. And then we'll scry. And you have a name. And we have the name. And you know what so, it looks like. Again, secondhand knowledge. By the way, I'm just, before I forget, before I forget, and we're running up on the end of the session, any, over this three-day period of time, any, since I don't have to sleep, well, other than the six hours, he, I'm going to be reading the, uh, the um, manual. Type of, it in the planning uh, chat so we don't forget. health. Put it in the what? The planning chat so we don't forget. Okay, got it. All right. Um, so scrying. As you concentrate on Ziavi and your consciousness leaves your body, what's more, 
as this is now the third time you've you've done this today. Um, you get the sensation of extreme heat as you see Ziavi and the dragon, because you're kind of like in a third person on this, looking at them. They're sitting relaxing with a mountain of gold behind them, items, paintings, things like that. Bodies are just strewn about the cavern that they're in. And Ziavi says to Elzroy, says, how long before they come here? My friend. Ildra goes, They'll be here soon. They're looking to take us down. They will only find their deaths. And Ziavi says, Ah, this is true. And as he's about to say something else, Ulzroy says, Wait. And he looks exactly at the scrying orb. He cool. says, they spy on us. True sight. Oh, shit. We didn't think about that. Think about what? I'm not a magic user. What's <laughs> going on? Yeah, we did. <laughs> and it's a little right. invisible ball. Yes, we did. <laughs> someone who has the ability to see invisibility. That's also we'll useful information. It'd be fantastic to have information. We could have planned around this, but now you bring it up. Oh, I am not at fault for this one. This is all of <laughs> you wiggly finger types. Ulzroy yeah. says to we were, we were fine with this <laughs> to the orb, whoever you are, we're waiting for you, and that's where we're gonna end tonight. Send a message. I wish we could send a message back. Well, yeah, fine. I use my my illusions to show everybody. Why so just describe what's going on when I can play a video? Uh, All right, looking up. Could he have, is, was there an exit out of the, that room? Uh, no. Okay, so it was deep, it was somewhere, it wasn't in the spout of the volcano. No. Okay. Good to know. Because, I mean, like, I can, I can put him under a lake. Like, do we know how, generic information, how well do they swim? <laughs> Like, okay, do they take damage from water being fire-based? I don't know if they take damage from water, but... Yeah. Probably not. You'd be a pretty we, sad dragon. We could... And then, put it in the planning chat. On the plus side, yeah. this might count as me meeting them. Uh, yeah. I mean, the, the uh, full visual probably was enough to get you to... Full visual at least familiar. was directly talked to. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, so you're familiar with them. <laughs> or, eh, at least firsthand. Yeah. Nice session tonight. Thank you, Mr. DM. No yeah. problem. Good playing, everybody. Uh, I enjoyed the interactions, and uh, I, everybody's doing a good job. Thank you all for cooperating and working together. Uh, as a side, I have updated the payments. So. Okay, thank you much. I'll check that later. All right, have thank a good night, everybody. Everybody have a great week. Nice. And... Um, what is what is our, so quick question? What is our plan for the rest of this month? All right, so I fully plan to have sessions on the eleventh and the eighteenth. Uh, there will be no session on the twenty fifth as it's Christmas. Um, yep. and then <laughs> the first I'm not sure about yet. That's the first. You can't do it on the first. So, well, people I'm, people will not be will not be sober. I mean, that's the thirty first <laughs> technically, but but still that. that we hung over. We'll, we'll be we'll be imbibing in preparation. <laughs> I mean, for the first. yeah, that that is fair. So we'll probably uh, skip the twenty fifth and the first. We'll find out though. We'll see. Sounds well, I good. Think, I think so. Unless you day off. drink, no, I'm just. <laughs> 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 well, All right. Have a good night, everybody. Have a great week, and thank you so much. And and uh, I had fun tonight. Glad. Yeah. Right. Good night. Good. All right. Bye. Yeah. Good night, everybody.